Today, we're going a little old school. We're gonna get friendly with some dice. We're gonna get friendly with a pencil. We're gonna get friendly with some paper. This is D100 Dungeon. As you can see right here, the Board Game Geek page says, old school dungeon delving without the need for a GM or friends. <laughs> That's the perfect player count. So what is this? Now, a lot of you, depending on how old you are, might remember some of those old computer games, things like Dungeon Hack, and maybe more recently where you had a party instead of just one person, something like Legend of Grimrock, where you have like a first person view, you're just crawling through dungeons, and you're killing things to take their loot uh, to, to make yourself better, to then kill bigger things, and to take their loot to make yourself better. Um, yeah, it's like that uh, that commercial, you know, in the 80s. So, uh, what we have here, this is a game by Martin Knight that is a, really, it comes down to a $15 PDF. That's really all you need. If you go to the Board Game Geek page here and you scroll down a little bit here, first of all, I'm not an artist, so don't expect this fancy level of map making going on here, but there's a link that takes you to Martin Knight's website, mk-games.co.uk. It looks like this when you go there, and up at the very top, you click on games, you can see other games created by uh, Martin, but in this case, we're talking about D100 Dungeon. We click on that and there's a bunch of ads and stuff here for um, his various other games and whatnot, little video previews so you can see what's going on. If you scroll down, this is what I want to focus on right here. I want to focus on the D100 dungeon range. So the first thing that we have to know, and I am not an expert at this, I only own two of the books and I've only ever looked at one of them, <laughs> is book one through seven for this, okay? Now, you only need, need, at the bare minimum, book one. Everything else appears to be optional, however, the internet seems to think that book six is the next best thing, right? So I, 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 I took that to be buy book one, buy book six, get started, and then fill in the rest as you go. Um, so I actually have never opened book six. I just, I haven't played book one yet. So I need to like kind of get familiar with the mechanics of it and everything before we expand on it. But I want to talk about how you get this before we jump right into it. We're going to make a character together, then we're going to play. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. First thing you need to know here, let's see, we have, I'm going to... I'm going to pull up some other websites here. So how do you get this? Okay, so number one, Martin didn't order 75,000 copies of a book that he sends out, you know, from overseas for pennies on the dollar and you can get it for 10 bucks or whatever. That's not the case, right? So what you have to do is you have to pop on over here, Drive Through RPG. This is a fantastic website for so many things. But in this case, I'm pretty sure it's our only way to actually get the books, right? This is a print-on-demand service, right? So you go to drivethroughrpg.com, and you can you can actually just look up Martin Knight here, as apparently I did. This is my actual bookmark to, <laughs> to Drive Through RPG, just so I can I can you know keep an eye on this and remember to remind myself, like, oh yeah, you need to probably go buy those other books and you really want to play this. So you can see here I own book one. I'm gonna focus on that. A lot of this stuff is print and play things that can bling out your game a little bit. Really what we're concerned about here, like like at the bit like like the base of this is the books, right? Like no, I'm not talking about accessories and all this stuff. No, no. Just the books, right? Of which there are seven. And one is required and the rest are whatever, but the internet says six is the next one to go. So I'm gonna click on book book one here. And two years ago when I bought this. I got myself this thing here, the PDF plus the hardcover standard color book. And so that's that's what um, well, I have right here to my side. And I'm not going to use that because, of course, it comes with the PDF. So I'm going to have the PDF on the screen so it's easier to read. And it's fantastic. $32.40. I don't know what it was when I bought it. It was probably, you know, give or take a dollar of that price. Shipping was a bit much. And I... I um, I think that that's not required uh, because if you buy the PDF, if there's ever any updates, take a look up here, you can see it says you own this title, uh, B001 book, book one, D100 dungeon version 3.1 digital. The book I have is version 3.0. So since then, there's been two little minor corrections, version 3.2. So that's the PDF that we're using, right? So of course my book is outdated. Now that's all right. They're just little minor things, you know, nothing, nothing important, like, like, you know, detrimental to gameplay or anything. I'll show you here how that all works in a minute, but... The point of this whole thing is to show you that all you really need to do is come here and purchase this. Now, you can also go to the Board Game Geek website into the file section over here, and I believe they do have like an, uh, they, he has an older version um, available for free, like a version 2.2, I think, but 3.2 you have to go buy um, over here at the uh, um, Drive Through RPG website, okay? So make sure that you're, you're playing the latest version here. This is the one that's still developing um, and fully developed, has all these different books and everything, not just like, you Know, just a little bit to it. So 15 bucks for a PDF, I think you can't go wrong because it is it is exactly what you want. If what you want is I want to kill things in a dungeon and sell the loot for 
stuff to make me better, like to buy gear and potions, heal myself, and go back into the dungeon, right? Like, that's that's it. That's it. We're diving into a dungeon. It's it's exactly what I want sometimes. I just want to go kill things and take their stuff, right? So, <laughs> does that make me a bad person? I don't know. So, um, you can also buy, and I have no idea, I've never seen this before, hardcover premium color book. This is a new thing, this premium. I don't know what this is, um, but there's, you know, like it's $10 more than just the standard color book, which just, it's just white pages with black ink on it and then a couple of colored illustrations in the book. So I don't know what the difference is of this premium one here. Uh, maybe there's a picture of it. I don't see it. I'm sure there's a description or something in here somewhere. But in any case, really, again, all you need to spend is 15 bucks. I'm trying to express to you how inexpensive this can be. 15 bucks and you need, a, you know, some paper um, and a and pencil, right? Like that's it. And, you know, hopefully that pencil has an eraser and, and some dice, right? You need 2d10 and a d6, right? You're good. Okay. So that's that's really it. That's what you need here. Now, there's other things. If you pop back on and over to the website here, what is accessories? I'm going to get into that last. I'm going to skip that for now and jump to the Android app over here, right? So this is a dungeon... Uh, it's a it's a D100 dungeon. It is a dice and table roller. So I can imagine how I don't have this, but I can imagine how it will help you speed things along, right? You don't have to grab your dice. You can press a button and it rolls. You don't have to look things up on a table. It I guess just jumps there for you or whatever. You can say what table you're rolling on. So you know that seems pretty straightforward. If you look here in some of these pictures, you know that looks pretty easy. Um, you know how many pips of damage are on your item, the skills that you have monster reaction roll you just press the button or you can roll all the dice at once i imagine this is fantastic i don't have it we're gonna play um with you know actual pen and paper and dice and whatnot here okay um, but this does exist and it's probably very useful additionally let's pop back on over here because i want to make sure that you see everything correctly the computer companion available on steam so that's this this is again completely different it is 13 dollars, and i'm going to say per book because if you look at the dlc here his like book two and book three i believe are here i i think they're working on book four but in the uh community hub over here there's a forum thread where it's like no 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 no, no skip all that make book six first so people are next. So people are really wanting that world builder book. Uh, so um, again, I don't know what it is yet, yet, but apparently people really want it. So this does not replace the books. What you're looking at here is just a companion. It'll draw the maps for you. It has your character sheet on it, as you can see, some fancy, <laughs> fancy little graphics and everything. Um, it'll do your roles and everything for you. I imagine this kind of thing can take a two hour adventure down to like 15 minutes, okay? Uh, look how fast, you know, in the little demonstration, how they're clicking on things here as you go, right? That may or may not be for you, but this does not mean that you don't need the books, okay? Uh, so, one of the cool things about this, apparently, is you can print out these maps, though, of your dungeon, which look a lot better than I'll ever draw. Um, and then you can also export and print, like, your character sheet, so you can bring it down, you know, back to uh, a pen and paper thing if you want to. Uh, but that is not going to replace those books. Now, finally, uh, let's see here. We have the Game Crafter stuff. You'll notice there are accessories available for this. Now, what is this? This is uh, the GameCrafter.com. Holy bling. Okay, so first of all, you'll notice that this is $62 here for the mapping game. And what this entails is actual physical components for a lot of these things instead of drawing them yourself, right? So there's there's little, um, uh, you know, uh, tiles for the dungeon. Ah, oh, God, there's not any good, good pictures here. But, like, this little small deck is the actual dungeon. So instead of drawing it, you just flip a card and that's the room that you got. So you're going to have to shuffle those cards and everything. There's a whole, there's, there's gold and yada, yada, yada. And then, yes, I didn't search this room yet. Yeah, there's there's ways to play this with all kinds of bling, right? You can you can you can purchase the game tracker for twenty three dollars, or you can buy the print and play version for like six bucks. And all it really is is exactly what you see right there, right? It's just it's just keeping track of your hit points. Boy, their site's slow today. Keeping track of your, of course, there's no like straight on shot of it, but at least you can get a, a, a decent look. You can track your food, how many lock picks you have. It's got a time tracker on it. So this is probably very, very handy because it'll keep you from having to erase off your sheet all the time. And I bet it would be the perfect thing for me to have here to show you just so we can keep that, you know, uh, an eye on my hit points and oil and lock picks and food and all that good stuff. Um, but I don't have any of that. Uh, so unfortunately, um, we're just going to be doing it with a with a pen and paper here, or a pencil and paper, okay? But you can buy all sorts of stuff. There's You can buy all of the monsters um, on a deck of cards, right? So instead of having to look it up on the table, I mean, you'll have to... I don't know if it's worth it or not. You look it up on the table anyway, maybe? Or maybe you have a deck of cards and they have the numbers on them somewhere. I don't have it, so I don't know. Uh, but there's... 
since new books have come out, expansions to the mapping game have come out. So now you got to buy all that kind of stuff too, just to keep on top of the books you bought, right? Here's extra gold. You can buy game sheets. Of course, you can just print those out. So just to, just to let you know that you could easily get $200 deep into all of the stuff. But at the end of the day, all you really need is a pencil, some dice, and the $15 PDF, right? Uh, you go back over here. Here's the list of books. You can take, take a look at them all. There's links directly to the drive through RPG page for it. I'm not going to get into the weeds on the rules. It's very straightforward. Um, if I was to try to explain the rules, it would take longer for me to explain it than for you to read the like 17 pages of rules. Uh, but the, the first couple pages of the book are, 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 are not game rules, right? Um, they're, they're generic stuff that uh, maybe you and I know, but not everybody knows, right? Like, what is a D10? How do you roll a D100 with 2D10, right? What is 2D10? You know, like, you ask, you know, you, some of us might take that for granted. We've been, we've been rolling 2D10 for 30, 40 years, some, you know, <laughs> so we know what that is. Um, uh, but like, you know, you ask my wife, you know, what's a, what's a 2d10 plus three? What, what's the range? And she's going to look at you like you're an idiot, right? Like, like, what does that mean? You know, like, that's not what, what, what did you just say to me? I'm going to get smacked. Okay. So not everybody knows that kind of stuff. So the beginning of the, of the PDF, at least of book one goes through that for you. So I think we're just about ready to make our characters here and or character. It's single, right? One, right. Which is another thing I absolutely love. I don't want to have a whole party going into this. I just want to have it nice and simple. Just just my one character in there killing things in the dungeon, taking their loot. So, yeah, I think that's, um, oh, no, no, one more thing. So if you go to downloads on his website, I knew there was one last thing. So here you go. You can come right here. If you have book one, you can download the game sheets, right? So that's like your your player sheet and everything. That is your um, the adventure sheet, you know, your your dungeon maps, your like grid paper kind of a thing. You can get all this on the website for free. It's just a direct link here straight to the PDFs. Up here, Dungeon uh, D100 Errata. If you click on this, it's pretty cool. Of course, it takes forever to load for some reason. Maybe my my uh, the, the tubes are clogged today. Uh, but basically, this is it's, it's pretty great because it is written. Let me pull this up here. Is this the right one? Oh, and it's too big. Hold on a second. Let me fix that. Is that better? Nope. It's going to be a little small, but that's the best I can do with what I've got here, I think. So... Uh, let's see here. Is that too big? Yeah, I, I didn't plan on having this page in here, so sorry. But basically, this tells you, you know, hey, if you have a first print of book one, like the physical print, here's what's changed. Some of these, if you look on the bottom, you can just cut those out and paste them into your book, right? So it's it's pretty slick to deal with the errata, right? So what you need in, in closing here, before we make our characters and jump right in, it's just this PDF. It's 15 US dollars, whatever that may be in your country here. I'm glad they changed it too. Like it didn't used to say book one. Like it was just the adventure game. Then you had like Adventurer's Companion. Then you had these other books with other things. Now it's very clear. They still have their titles, but now they just say book one, book two, book three, book four. It's awesome. The other books, I'm sure they add a ton to it. There's like campaign modes and all kinds of crazy stuff that I have no idea what any of that stuff does. What I have is this here. So you need to buy this for 15 bucks. You need to have a pencil right now. If you have a fancy mechanical pencil, even better because then you don't need a way to sharpen those pencils. You know, these are these are a dollar at the dollar store. And maybe a heavy duty eraser because the erasers on mechanical pencils are kind of garbage, right? So what else might you need? You also might need some dice or you could use a free dice roller app on your phone or something. So bare minimum, I feel like you're looking at, at this, right? You need, you need a PDF or the book and this right here, you can buy just the book separately, of course. All right, so otherwise, you know, it's kind of nice to have a have a dice tray, right? It is nice. That's a nice little bonus to have. I think that'll be a good thing. Now, what's, what else could we do, you know, maybe for a little bit of, of, of bling here, right? Well, when I tried to play this initially and I was just kind of fooling around with it, colors. The rooms are colored, right? How do I know that? Look at this sheet. Here's all the rooms, right? So you so colors. Maybe you want to bring in to it yourself some colored pencils, right? But again, colored pencils are going to need that pencil sharpener probably, right? So you're going to have to have that. You're going to have to have all of these and everything, okay? So suddenly it's getting to be, yeah, a little bit more here. What else could we use? Well, what about... Right, you're gonna be walking around, writing, you're gonna want a hard surface you can pick up on here. How about a clipboard? You can get a plastic one for way too much money and it's bad for the environment. You can get the wood ones, those are really nice. I can't find mine, but I know I have a large one around here somewhere and some small ones, right? So you might need one of these as well, you know, if you just happen to have one. Well, what else do we have? 
Well, you could also get another book. Now, I've, it's funny, I've never actually opened this. As far as I know, it could just be all blank pages as a misprint from Drive Through RPG. So let's just take a look. Well, so far, not great. Let's see here. Uh, oh, there we go. Yep, there's book in here. So, right. So whatever all this is, I have no idea. I've literally never opened this. It's been on my shelf for two years, but we're not going to play with this to start because I have absolutely no idea what's in that book, right? So you've got all these other pages. Now, I'm going to also say if you want to kick it up a notch without going with the full bling, maybe you get yourself a laminator, right? So I printed off some of the charts in the game because I liked the idea of having them very handy. So here I have a character sheet, right? Or the adventure sheet, right? This is where you put your character information and then you fill in all your gear, your hit points, lock picks, oil, food, your skills, right? Your backpack, if things are broken, your quest tracker, right? Yada, yada, yada. I have this, you know, it's great if you use like a wet erase thing. The problem is here, you're, you know, you're changing your hit points a lot. So like the, the tracker thing might be a good thing to have, right? So, you know, there's some more, more stuff. You can spend some more money if you really wanted to. Um, I like having this mapping thing in the find chart on the back because it seems like those are the two things that should be together. I'm doing them together constantly, right? So that's really handy. But for you and me here today, I think we're going to do something a little bit different. I've got a, I've got a good idea, right? So instead of, um, I'm going to probably have my character sheet written on here, uh, or our character on the adventure sheet rather, and actually use a physical character sheet. Um, this, this sheet here, the one happened to be called the handy sheet, is actually incredibly handy, right? This does have the monster abilities on the back. These are keywords, right? Like it's flying or it uh, does disease or whatever. And then this will walk you through combat, escaping combat, how turn, like the turn order, how to cast spells, right? This little part I need to read because I've never, you know, my, my one character was not a spell caster. And then this is, this is useful for combat up here. All of that's pretty great and all. Here's your here's your uh, your grid paper. We can draw our maps on. So here's the uh, the original two dungeons I did, you know, on one sheet just to kind of save sheets of paper. My character I was fooling around with here who had to had to hightail it out of the dungeon two times on the second quest. Right here's a nice laminated thing I was gonna use to draw my dungeon sheets when I'm just playing sitting here by myself. Some full shot size laminated sheets in case I needed some extras. I didn't like the small ones, but between you and me. We're going to play on this, and in that case, we're going to need some of these, right? So what we're going to do is we have this, uh, this is the old uh, chess X. I say old because I don't think they make it anymore, um, uh, uh, like a uh, battle mat, right? This is the, uh, the old chess X battle mat that they don't make anymore. The new ones are like blue on one side and, and, and like green on the other and all and squares on both sides or hexes on both sides but you see what, what they've done there is they've taken the perfect battle mat there's hexes on the back side of this and they've 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 split the product line right so now you can get a gray and black one that's either all hexes or all squares or a green and blue one that's either all hexes or all squares eh, i don't know but th this one here i don't think they print this anymore i don't think they manufacture this anymore but it's going to work perfectly for our um uses here it's wet erase, so I won't be able to smudge too much, as you can see. The problem is, is I'm not going to have like a, like a wet towel up here to fix any mistakes. So I've got some ideas on how to make this work for us. So let's go ahead and make our character, and then we'll jump right into it. All right, let's get started here. We are ready to make our character. So I, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the character down as we do the creation here on this little character sheet. I'm gonna show you in the PDF what it actually looks like, and then I'm gonna transfer this over to something that we're gonna use for the actual playthroughs here. And I'm, I'm so excited because this, this, hopefully we don't die right away and we can have a really cool adventure here that might actually take a little bit of time too. You know, like it may be a couple of videos worth of, uh, of adventure. I don't know. Maybe we die in dungeon number one. So the first thing is I want to have you take a look uh, at the character sheet. Now I realize this this is this is whoa this is a little intimidating. There's all kinds of crap on here. So here's what I've got. Boom. All right. So what you're looking at here is the character sheet where I've color coded things. So it's going to be easier for me to say in the backpack yellow section right now. And the, the backpack on the back is where you would transfer things to your backpack. The back side of the character sheet, the adventure sheet. I'm going to do that the entire time I play this. By the way, it's adventure sheet. 
uh, is on the is on the right hand side there. That's also where the Empire building stuff is the, and the quest log. Everything else is going to be on the front. Your equipped items is the yellow section there, right? Your um, base, your stats are in the red up at the top, and then you've got uh, spells here in purple, health points, oil, food, picks, and the other thing up there, up in top in pink, uh, are are kind of the things that we do at the end of character creation. So that's that's why they're pink, so I can make this kind of easy for us. Our time track in orange on the bottom there, our skills on the bottom left over there, and our um, Keys, levers, poison, and disease in green and slightly darker green. And then right above that, our belt in plain white. All right, so let's take a look here at the PDF real faster. I know, I know nobody wants to hear me drone on. This PDF is fantastic, by the way. It is just, you, you, so you can't see it, but I can. I actually have chapter markers, so I can just click on something and get right to whatever it is that I want, right? But I wanna, I wanna just show you real fast here how awesome this is, right? So we are already on page six, seven, eight. So on page eight, here is, here's what a D100 is. Here's what a D10 is, right? Here's how you say D10, right? Here's what D100 means. Here's what, you know, uh, you know, whatever. Like this is, you know, 1D6 minus one. Here's how you read that. Here's how this works. And here's how to chart to read a percentile die. Maybe you don't know how to do it, right? That's page nine. Page 10, it starts with creating your character. And I'm pretty sure like the end of like the actual like rules is on page like 25. Let me see here. Oh, maybe not. 30, 30. Three, right? So, so 23 pages of rules and look at page 33. It's a whole lot of, of that, right? <laughs> it's, it's just, this is what it might look like when you're doing your dungeon, right? So there's, there's not really a lot of rules here. So number one, characteristics. So there are three characteristics used in the game, right? There is only strength, dex, and intelligence. You can see those on the top of the character sheet in the red up there. Now, what you do is you get to assign 50, 40, and 30. So we could, you know, you're going to think, so what I'm going to do, unfortunately for you, maybe some of you, some of you, if you watched my Hexplore, the Valley of the Dead King, like overview and playthrough videos, you will know that I have like a Dwarven adventure that I use like in every game just as, as, as one of like my party. I have like a whole party. I just, I just like a generic party I use and everything. I'm going to go with that guy. Okay. So I'm going to have my same little Dwarven warrior and never in a million years am I going to roll on the table the gear I want. I want an axe and a shield, <laughs> but it'll never happen. But maybe we can build up to it one day and uh, I can, I can have my, my character, the vision uh, uh, as I see my vision of him. So um, anyway, what are we going to do? You would think that you would just say, okay, well, we're going to go warrior, right? So strength, dex, int. So 50, 40, 30, right? Well, they're all important stats. They're all, they're all good stats. <laughs> all right. So we, what do we do, right? What do we do? Now, at the very end of that, you have mighty blow, perfect aim, and spellcaster. Again, we're looking at the red section up there, right? Those unlock, and it's written up there. It says unlock the abilities below at level 50, right? So if we have a 50 strength, we can get mighty blow, which is exploding dice on our damage if we roll a six. Perfect aim is amazing because it lets us choose a hit location. We basically roll 2d10 and pick one, and Spellcaster lets us cast spells. So I know that it seems like just going heavy into strength is going to be the answer, but I know something that you don't know, and, and I want to aim to get both of those over 50, both strength and deck. So I'm going to go 40, 50, and 30, okay? So that's, that's what we're going to start with right here, 40, 50, and 30, okay? Next up, what do we have here? Hero Path. Now this part, in summary, are you going to be a, a warrior, a rogue, or a sorcerer? Period. End of story. That's that. But you'll notice it does say if you don't know or you truly want to go random, you can roll for it. So you have chart H right here, right? So we could take a D6. We have a six, so we are a what? We are a sorcerer. Well, that's not going to happen. We're going to go with a warrior is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to, at the very top of the character sheet there, you can see it says Hero Path. I'm going to write in warrior, right, or war, something like that. So I know it's right above the red, right in the dead center, hero path. So that's that's my hero path is warrior. So if I'm going to be a warrior, what do I get? You'll notice it says I get a little black circle star thing and plus 10 strength. So what I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier to read is I'm going to go plus 10 strength and, and color in the little star thing. Then I'm going to go negative five dex and negative five intelligence. Ooh, that's a bummer, 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 right? But you'll notice now we have 50 strength and 45 dex. We're, we're kind of close though, right? Um, it might not be so hard to get our dex up is the idea. Also notice bravery and escape are things that we have as well. Now, one thing I might complain about during this, this game here is the character sheet. My understanding is that there's different versions of the character sheet that Martin has introduced 
in the different books because you need more things. You need more spots on the character sheets, right? So the character sheet we're looking at is the one in the back of book one. The last like six pages of book one are the things that you're going to want to print uh, and, and laminate if you can, I suppose. But that's where you're going to have like your, your dungeon map, your character sheet, the um, handy sheet, the monster ability sheet. You're going to want to have all those things on hand. Um, I also found that, and it's funny because I didn't finish it, but I've got a whole bunch of these already made up. I, I want to put them on here because I want to be able to flip two, you know, encounters. And so I have these little tabs you can get. They are really expensive for what they are. You know, like a pack of these is like six bucks and you get, you know, just a small little pack of them. I was not pleased with those, <laughs> but they're very handy. Uh, and then I decided, you know what, this would make a fun play on the channel here. So, so that's it for Hero Path, right? Depending on what you pick for your character, fill this in appropriately. What is the little black star thing? So on the character sheet, I just put, you'll see I've highlighted it green here and green there and green there. And on the character sheet there, you can see there's a little black star in front of strength that, that uh, you would shade in. That tells you whenever you gain experience in that, you gain double the experience. Basically, you're like proficient in bravery and escape and strength in our case here, right? So that's really, really what you're looking at. So let's pop back on over here to creating an adventure. Next, we have our race, dwarves, elves, and humans, or roll on R. Um, table R was missing from like the first print of the book, by the way. That's one of those things in the errata. Obviously, it was fixed by the time I got my print. So you could, again, you could just roll a D6. I don't know. I'm going to go in totally unknown. I rolled a three, so we could be a, a, an a elf sorcerer in another world. Instead, I'm going to be a dwarf warrior here. So dwarf. Oh, and look at that. We got another plus five strength. How lovely. So now our strength is 55. And then we have minus five more intelligence that's a bummer so our intelligence is down to 20 but we get to put in five more into the strong skill and we are proficient with it i didn't finish my thought on this character sheet i don't like it there's a lot of stuff that is not in a good spot and like clear places where things should be and they're not and then only half of like the little reminders and stuff and the ones that are there are in weird spots like over here it talks about how to deflect your damage to your shields where would you write that right over here but up here it does remind you when you're picking up stuff that some gear you're going to find starts with 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 you know is damaged goods when you find it maybe that's an okay spot for it but if it's stuff that you're finding in the dungeon and you might not equip it right away wouldn't it be great to have that written here on your backpack too just there's there's a lot of little things that i feel like just needed a little bit more love that just don't have them but that's okay it, it does get the job done and there's very little in this game that you really need to remember like it's just it's pretty straightforward next up skill bonus this is my favorite thing right here i'm just going to read it to you before the adventurers starting exploring dungeons in search of lost treasures they gained a few extra skills other than those provided by their hero path or race choose any two skills that don't currently have any skill bonuses and add plus five to each skill so um, that doesn't say that you get the skill bonus though, right? That little green thing is only on the three that you have, right? Those little filled in stars. But I think we're going to say that we were really good at avoiding traps in our youth. That's plus five. And maybe we got into a little trouble and that's plus five on lock picking, right? So I'm going to add plus five to locks. Oh, that does. Oh, and this is going to be green, huh? That's not going to work. <laughs> How funny, I didn't even think about that at the time. All right, so there's there's that. We go on to page two, equipment. This is also a fun part, right? So basically it says, and nowhere on here, by the way, does I, I know I just said it, and so I'm just gonna clarify here. Um, when you find an item in the dungeon, you roll for damage on it immediately, which I'm totally gonna forget when we're playing, by the way. However, I don't see anywhere here where it says the gear you start with starts with damage. I'm pretty sure you just start with everything like legitimately like the perfect version of a knife or whatever thing that it is that you roll, okay? So let's go ahead and, it's, and, and read what it says here under equipment. The short version is you get 20 oil, you get 10 food and 15 picks, okay? So you get 20 oil, you get 10 food and 15 lock picks. I also don't like this part of the thing. It should just be a number uh, because you're trying to erase these tiny, 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 tiny little circles. That's the middle pink oil food picks there. It's very hard to do. You need an incredibly precise uh, eraser, not a giant fat one like this like look how look at the size of this it's just it's just difficult to do so i'll probably just end up writing numbers or something or tally marks or something to scratch them off now next up and maybe i'll just kind of jump ahead and we'll do the fun rolling part last uh you will see that finishing touches give yourself 20 hit points right so that's gonna go 20 primary hit points current hit points are 20 so on your character sheet that's the, the the third pink section there on the bottom right where it says health points just put in 20 for primary and under current put in 20 as well 
And then we have um, one rep, three fate, and three life. Okay, and then it says, now you're ready to begin the game by choosing the first quest called Dungeon Training 1. So I know I skipped most, like the fun part, five. So we'll get right there. So real fast at the very top, I already forgot. I said one, three, and three, I think. <laughs> so it was one rep, three fate, and three life. Okay, so I filled that in. Let's go back here and just make sure I didn't screw that up. Yes. So what are these things, right? What is one rep, three fate, and three life? What is that on the character sheet on the top there? Reputation. So when you're rolling for quests, you get to roll on the quest chart up to your reputation. When you come back from a quest, you get to go buy stuff at the market up to your rep reputation, right? So like, oh, I want to go buy on the treasure table. So I can, I have a reputation of three. I can roll I can roll up to three times on the, the available tables. There's, I think, four tables available. We'll get there at some point. Um, here, it's on here somewhere. Uh, anyway, here, here's what happens before your next quest. Search the market. So you get to roll on tables A, T, A, T, B, T, C, and W, right? So there's five tables, and what you get to do is my reputation is three. So I could roll one time on table W, or all three times on table W if my reputation was three. Um, or I could roll one time on treasure A, one time on treasure B, one time on treasure C, and those things don't just come to me, they let me buy them if I uh, want to and have the available money. That's that's reputation is good for that. Reputation is also good for, um, you can, you can roll multiple times when choosing a quest because you know hey you're popular right people know you that you're you're in demand to get stuff done for these people uh fate fate points are crazy right so fate points are basically rerolls right like if you just can't let it happen you can burn a fate point and and reroll now you can reroll any die you want or or the roll that happened right so if i'm going to roll uh a, a 100 if i'm rolling you know percentile and boy i really want under 50 and I roll or uh, under 45 and I roll the 48 well do I roll both dice or do I roll just one if I want I could choose to roll just one and try to get under you know whatever I just said 40 right oh I, I rolled poorly again and I'm trying to get under um uh, you know 45 say I'm trying to get under 45 or right so let's um use a, a fate point so I erase it I now have two fate points I rolled a four again great I can keep rolling and burning fate points as long as I have them reputation goes from one to ten I don't know why it doesn't tell you that it maxes out at 10 on there, but it should. Just like it should tell you that strength, dex, and int max out at 80, and your skill bonuses max out at plus 20. It doesn't say that on the sheet. You just have to remember that somehow. Um, but there's like other little clues on here. It's really weird that they're not all on there. Anyway, so that's fate. It's just re-rolling dice. And then life is basically when you die... You could burn a life point and pop right back up and remove all poison, disease, and full hit points, right? So you essentially have three lives. And from what I can see, it doesn't it doesn't like happen in a weird or I mean it, it's kind of weird. It doesn't happen like, you know, oh you have to go back to town. I you just I think burn it in the dungeon from from what it sounds like. It didn't sound like there was anything about like you having to do anything like different like just oh that that rat killed me i guess i've got full hit points again um, but you do lose a life and i imagine they are probably very hard to come by so the last thing that we haven't really talked about here other than like the rules but we, we can do we can do the rules and the turn order and all that fun stuff once we get there is the equipment here so this is our starting gear so this is where i pause the video and take a break and then i just take i just do take after take after take until i get what i want right <laughs> Okay. So um, the short version of what I'm about to do is roll one time on table W, W for weapon, and three time on table A for armor. If I happen to roll a piece of armor that is assigned to a location I've already got equipped, I can either keep the new armor rolled and disc um, it says you may either keep the new armor rolled, discard the old item, or roll again. That's just kind of weird to me, right? It just, it just that that's just 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 roll to get three different items. That's that's the answer, right? So let's go ahead and see. Let's do. Uh, do we do our weapon first? No, no. Let's do our our three armor. So here's the armor table. I'm gonna pull this up so you can see it. <laughs> no, I shouldn't. Watch. I'll do this. I got a 100. <laughs> we got a 22 on our roll. So we got, what do we have here? We have leather arm guards, right? So I'm gonna write that in under arm. Leather, L-T-H-R, arm guards. And then you'll see that there's little stats and stuff next to it, right? So that was, what did I say? I'm gonna put the numbers on here so I can just look this up later. 22, leather arm guards, A0, 66 gold it's worth and 14 gold per pip to fix. Okay, so those are not very good is basically the short version of that story, right? So these things have zero armor. So if I get hit in combat, 
It doesn't just automatically absorb one or two points of damage, right? I can assign damage to it, but then I break them, right? That's what those little pips are there. But having just a flat zero doesn't, it means it's just not of high enough quality to just accept a weak hit. Our next item up is a five. <laughs> okay, so what do we get here? We got ourselves legs, leather tacit. All right, legs, 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 five. All right. Oh man, this is. I need to roll high. Come on, guys. A068. A068. Oh, okay. Did I, uh, let's see here. 20, uh, 60, I said 68, right? Legs, 68 and 14. Why is that different? 68 and 14. What did I have? 22, 66 and 14. That's weird. Okay, I guess it's just closest and round up if I remember right. There's like a, it's like one fifth of the cost and round it up or something like that. And if anything completely breaks and hits a little X over here on your character sheet, you can see you can take five points of damage to it, up to two per hit, right? You can't, you can't assign three, three points of damage in a single hit. It can only be two. Um, so after two big hits, right, you assign two damage, two damage, your thing is almost broken, right? Whatever that is. Our final armor roll. 70. Oh boy, at least it's high up there. Ish. Uh, hands. Male hand wraps. All right. Hey, no, that was good. Okay, so 70. Male hand wraps. And that is uh, 70. Male hand wraps is A2. Good deal. So if we get hit in the hands, we got to protect these babies. That's right. We should insure them. Uh, 167. And. So, let's see, what did I see? Ah, 70, 167 and 34 gold pieces to repair. So obviously the higher quality items as we go cost more to repair. Now for the big one. We're gonna roll on the weapon table and see what we get here. Let me go click on the weapons list so I can look at it ahead of time. And we have, or at least have it ready for us, 28, that's gotta be bad. Let's see, a 28, oh, I don't know, the bookmark takes me to the second page. 28 is a war pick. At least it's zero. <laughs> okay. Uh, main hand. Is it one-handed? Let's see. What did I say? 20, 28. Am I right? 28 on the side here. Main hand. 20. Yes, it's a one-handed war pick. Okay. No shield for us, but we did get a war pick that is plus zero damage. So that's, 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 so in my character, I played just to kind of get an idea of what was going on. I, I, I rolled a, um, like, 71 or 72. I had a plus two damage, two-handed bill there. My guy was just out there just slaying rats. It was amazing. That plus two damage means a lot when your rat only has three damage or two damage and whatever. It's pretty amazing. All right, so that's zero damage, 68 and 14. Okay, and then that's it. Our character is made, everybody. Ta-da! All right, here's our future millionaire gold hero with a 20 intelligence, a 45 dex, and a 55 strength. So maybe it would have been a good idea to go 50 strength because then we'd have a 65 or better to roll on, but we'll see how this all works out. I think we're going to be just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to something I can actually use while I'm playing. God, I don't know. This might actually work pretty well. Um, but uh, if I'm going to have to like erase things and keep track of things, it's just going to be probably easier. I don't know. Maybe this isn't so bad. Maybe, maybe I will just use this and we'll see how this goes. And if I have to, I'll transfer it. But here's our character. This is our war, our dwarf warrior who's gonna start out with a, a war pick, which is kind of cool, because it's not a two-handed weapon. Uh, it allows us to pick up a shield at some point. We don't start with any gold or anything, I don't believe, so I think we just kind of have to go with, with what we've got there uh, with, with creating our adventurer, right? We don't have any, uh, any fancy, you know, start with some gold and go ahead and, um, you know, go shopping to begin with or anything like, um, it's fun to do and nice to do that. I like it. Like, um, how funny, Hexplore It, which I just played, does that. You know, and it's nice. Like, you get a little bit of, like, starting cash to do your thing. So, real quick, I want to just go over the life points. Like, a cat has nine lives and can cheat death on many occasions. The adventurers are blessed with the same luck and have a number of lives, which can be used each time they would lose enough HP to kill them. So, that's, yeah, that's like us getting hit real hard, right? Whenever an adventurer's HP is reduced to zero or less, the player may spend one life point to cheat death and instantly restore all of the adventurer's lost hit points and remove all disease and poison pips shaded on the adventurer sheet. Sadly, when an adventurer has no life points remaining and have lost their last hit point, they have died and it's time to begin a new adventurer. So yeah, it's just basically, oh yeah, you got me, you know, in the dungeon, I, I erase that and then there we go. So 
I don't know. I think we are in pretty good shape. We're going into the dungeon, you know, a little bit uh, naked, but uh, I'm super excited to get this to the table here and get playing. So let's jump right into it now. All right, we are almost ready here. I just goofed on one thing. I completely forgot to point out that we start with three lesser healing potions. So that's super important. So um, I added them to my character sheet right here on my belt. If you're looking at the character sheet where that is, that says belt slots in white right across the center of the board there, right? So that's that's that. And the only other thing that we really have to do is it's the, uh, on the bottom here, it says the first quest called Dungeon Training 1, right? See, choosing a quest. So the choosing a quest thing isn't really um, important right now. This is not something that we need to like go through and read all about how you choose a quest and go about doing all this because it tells us what to do. It says do training quest one. So that is on chart Q, right? This is quest. There's 50 quests in the game. You can see it's like three pages of quests, right? And there, there's two per quest. So there's 50, 50 quests. And it says we start on dungeon training one. So the idea is with your brand new adventurer, you go through one, two, three, four, and five. And my understanding is, is that one of the later books like book two probably, has like charts you can roll on to just get into it, right? You just skip past the training. But since this is our first time and I need to figure out what we're doing here, and you might want to see how it all starts, you know, this is from zero to hero here, right? We're going to do dungeon training one. You might not understand this just yet, but we'll get there. It says encounter mod negative 40, right? That's encounters or enemies. So this keeps us from fighting dragons the second we stop, you know, set foot into the dungeon here. Um, and then success, we gain 50 gold. Failure, we lose half of our gold. And the goal is enter the dungeon, uh, and loot three parts from the monsters there. That's our quest. That's all there is to it. Nice and simple, very straightforward. So to facilitate remembering this, you can, as you're supposed to, write it on the back of your quest log, uh, back of the page here, um, back of the adventure sheet, not quest log, in the quest log section on the right. So you can see there's a quest tracker. You just put little ticks in there. And there's a whole thing for like if you fail them, what you do, if you pass them, what you do, how you roll to pick your next one, what happens if you roll one that you've completed or failed or whatnot. There's a whole thing for that. I'm not going to keep flipping the page over and fill this out for us. It'll be hard to remember. So instead, we're just going to do this and remember what it is. We're on Dungeon Training 1. Our encounter mod is negative 40. That'll be the hard thing for me to remember, but very important. And then our goal in here is to loot three parts from monsters. So um, I need a couple of physical props here for me that you won't need. So I'm going to keep these on hand. When we fight things, they go onto this sheet. When we're mapping things, I'm going to need something up close in my face here. And then I might need to refer to the monster ability chart maybe uh, a couple of times here. So as opposed to like, uh, right uh, here on the screen. So we'll see how that goes. So how does the game play? Super quick, right? Check this out. Number one, time track. So shade in one time on the time track. If it triggers something, do it. So, shading it here on the time track, right? Uh, there's hour number one in the dungeon. Orange on the bottom there is your time track. You'll see there's a little candle. What does that mean? Burn an oil. So over here, we started with 20 oil. I just wrote in a 20. Actually, my zero's kind of bad. And I'm just gonna put little tally marks to keep track of how much oil to subtract when we're done with it, okay? So we burned an oil, that way we don't have to suffer the negative 20 penalty right here in the top of the character sheet because we're in the dark, right? We don't want a penalty. We want to jump right in here and start kicking things butts. Now, because this is turn one, it's it's you get to kind of skip this here, right? So it says uh, exits is the next thing. Basically, figure out how to get out of the room you're in. Well, we're outside. So let's just let's just pretend that like, you know, here's a here's a mountain or whatever, and here's the entrance here's a cave entrance and here's the mountain and then there's there's like maybe it's in the middle of the forest or something right here's some trees right we've got some pretty little trees here some little they look like clouds i don't have <laughs> i don't have here here's some trunks right here's the trees and maybe there's a path that leads down to the village i don't know but our 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 room one is going to be up here okay and so we thought let's let's head on in there i don't know which one i'm going to need yet so let's see so what you do is you roll on this now right so we go we skip it we go to area when the exit has been dealt with well in this case our exit is wide open so we exit the world into the dungeon and we just roll okay so let's let's see what we got here we have 66 as our first dungeon room here. So what does that mean? Pull up the map. Yeah, let's see, that is hard for me to do. So I might have to keep this one handy. So look at room 66, and it's a yellow room. Not a great place to start because there's nothing doing here, right? It just kind of curves over to the left a little bit. 
and that's it. Like we're gonna we're gonna be forced to go to the left because there's no other way out. Now I realize this is a yellow pen, so it's kind of hard to see. I realize you can't see it either, but that's a that's our yellow room right here, and it is what did I say? 66, 66 yellow, 66. I'm gonna write a little six and a six in there. So. Um, Basically, that's that for, for all of that. We move on to search, right? Because yellows are empty, right? I put the chart on the right over here. Yellow, empty. The yellow areas are mostly empty, okay? But you'll notice that we have the ability to search. Searching a yellow is a zero, plus zero modifier, right? So on my physical copy I have of this here, I liked having the find chart on the back just because you're rolling for it all the time. You're searching. So you have an option. It's optional. You don't have to search if you don't want to. We can just leave this room and never go in here and search, okay? Because um, it could cost us time. We could get attacked by an enemy. We could blow ourselves up. I mean, I've fallen in spike pit traps. All kinds of stuff can happen, right? Um, but I think for the purposes of, you know, the adventure hey the townsfolk said don't go into that cave it's dangerous <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna be big hero one day you watch let's go in there and see what we find on the find chart 56 i thought it was another 66 nope that's 56 so what does find say on 56 so it says plus one time so again right we have to shade in one time on our little tracker sheet here right one time and 56 and it's a plus zero modifier. So this says, moving away some rubble, a weapon is revealed. Roll on table W. Weapons. That was amazing. 56 was a great roll. I almost can't believe my eyes. Okay, so what I'm going to have to just do, there are too many tables for me to be bouncing around. I'm just going to have to, like, pull up the PDF and, and roll. This is the only way to do it, okay? I couldn't make, like, on-screen graphics for everything. It was just, there's the whole book is tables. All right, so what, what weapon did we find? We found a... <gasps> no way! <laughs> I was so upset there for just a second when I saw this one roll zero because I was like, oh great, we're going to find a number one. <laughs> okay, hold up. <laughs> oh, I love having this green screen for the dice because nobody would believe me otherwise. So we... <laughs> a mighty claymore. Oh my god, I could cry. You don't understand. When I started this, initially, my other character, I had a knife at negative two damage. It was impossible to kill even rats. And here we are. I'm finding Excalibur. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm into it. Okay, so here's what we have to do now. On your character sheet, right, you, you'll notice there's only a main hand and an offhand section. Everything else has to go off to the side over there, right? So I'm going to put my war pick which i forgot what number it was but that's what it is i'm gonna put it on the back here so slot who cares item it's, it's main hand item war pick i can't believe that happened uh plus zero i'm gonna sell this thing so fast you guys told me there was nothing in here what's to be afraid of villagers 68 and 14 68, 14, and it is completely undamaged. Now, the only question I, I couldn't really find an answer to was, it says four items with damaged tracks. So I know that gear has damaged tracks. So I think you have to put this up here and not down here on the bottom of your page two backpack um, because there's there's no spot for it there, right? Like there's no, there's no place to keep track of the pips. Now, unfortunately, Excalibur here is going to be broken to begin with, but I don't care. Maybe it's still better than anything that we would have ever be able to use, and that's okay with me. Holy cow, I'm going to need a vacuum after all this eraser stuff. I can't believe that happened. A 100 on our first roll. So we have a two-hander. Um, so I guess that's two-handed. We'll say Mighty Claymore. Holy cow. Oh my goodness. What luck. All right, so that's plus four damage. So where's damage here? Mighty Claymore, so plus four. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this giant. I feel like I should put it like in green marker or something here, right? So plus four. I don't know how to write this best because there's no like two-handed thing here, right? Like it's just main hand, off hand, but I'm using both hands. So I guess, you know, there's, there's that. And then it does, yeah, four, oh my gosh, 467 gold, four, six, seven, maybe, you know what I do, I write it all on one line, and 94 per pip. Maybe I write it just all on one line here. 
By the way, does anybody have a favorite? This is funny. Like, I have, like, favorite pens, favorite erasers, favorite pencils. It's amazing. All right, okay. So Mighty Claymore. I can't believe it. <laughs> This is going to be... We're going to make short work of Dungeon Training 1 here, I think. All right. What in the... I can't believe that happened. I'm, 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 I'm like, beside myself. I really am. Okay. So now what happens next? We go to Time Track Shade 1, right? So we're going to Shade 1 on the thing here. Oh, we have to roll for damage. Uh, if you look at the character sheet here, um, it's really hard to see. It's where I put, like, the, the yellow lines... Right above all the boxes on the front of the character sheet, it says, Item found, roll 1d6. So let's let's see how damaged our mighty Claymore is. We want to roll low. We roll a 4, and it says, Rolling a 3 or 4 is 2 pips of damage on it already. So we're going to fill in 2 pips of damage on it already. So it's already a little bit broken, but who cares? Who cares? Chester Copperpot in here f dropped his almighty Claymore and got killed or something because now we picked it up. I can't believe that happened. That was amazing. Um, I don't think you roll... Yeah, wow, how funny. Okay, all right, yeah, I'm just like, mind is blown here. Okay, so now next to the next turn. So we go time track, right? So we're going to fill one in on time track. You'll notice now there's a little dagger there, right? So there's, see, like there's uh, an orange part on hour three. There is a little um, a little dagger with a tiny, tiny, tiny little number four on there. So the real quick look at the time track is this here, um, right? Effects of oil says we have to use the oil or we get a minus 20 to each of our stats over here. The effects of food, you lose five hit points if you don't eat or choose not to eat. And the effects of wandering monsters. So the player rolls 1d10 and if the result is equal to or less than the number a monster has appeared, roll on the encounter table. So we're trying to roll higher than four. One. You know what? I deserve it. <laughs> so we got um, a, a wandering monster, right? So as the PDF says, roll on table E and counter to see what has turned up. Don't forget to include the quest and counter modifier. That's very important. Wandering monsters must be dealt with before anything else can be resolved. Now, since we did this yellow thing, it's really hard. I'm going to try to maybe scratch it out. I'm going to try to put like, yes, we searched there. Um, something like that. Okay. So we have to roll on the encounter table at negative 40. Basically, they don't want us fighting golden dragons here at turn turn one. If you go, if, you, if we roll the 100, it's really a 60, right? And so we would only be fighting an orc that has 10 hit points, okay? So that's how the game keeps this balance together. So let's see, we are at a 65 minus 40. Remember, encounter right here, minus 40. So this is our encounter roll, 65 minus 40 is a big 25 on the encounter table, which is right here. Encounter table 25 is a giant no, no, not A, not singular. It is multiple giant ants that I'm going to... I've never fought giant ants before. Okay. Oh, I have it right in front of me. Okay, so what we have to do now, and I don't think I have a fancy graphic of this. I do not. So you'll see here, this is just the dungeon uh, combat track. So encounter, I write down all the information that is on the 25 here. Giant ants, right? So I write encounter giant... Ants. Remember, this is quest one. You're not supposed to have a plus four claymore to start. So we're going to make quick work of this. Defense zero. Damage minus two. Remember, mine's plus four. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Defense is two. I'm looking at the wrong thing. So defense. I can't wait to see how black my fingers come out of this from just having to scratch this stuff off. Damage is negative two. Giant ants. Three, two. So three, two, three, three, right? Table P1 if we kill them, and giant ants are pack enemies. Okay, so the quick explanation on combat. Combat's pretty straightforward. Defense is what's impossible to figure out. That's that's requires like PhD in mathematics. So you can see here I've just I've just written giant ants. They have an attack value of 25. That's what the AV is right there. Maybe this will show up better over here, right? Maybe without the glare. Is there a way I can do that? Okay, giant ants, attack value 25. They have a defense of 2, which is good that I'm at plus 4 now. They have damage of minus 2 when they hit me. Um, oh, I forgot a slash. They don't have 3, 2, and 33. There are 4 of them, and they have 3, 2, and 3, 3 hit points. That just seems odd to me. Is that right? 3, 2, 3, and 3. It is right. Okay. So the giant ants are that. K, uh, under K, under P1, is what happens when we kill them. We roll on table P1. Guess what? P is for parts on table 1. 
guess what our goal is? Loot three parts from monsters. How do we get those? We kill them. And they have the ability of pack. And being the first enemy that we kill in the dungeon, we get 100 gold if we can kill them. These, This is a heck of a first room of the dungeon, let me tell you. Giant ants attacking us, carrying around 100 gold, and we've got friggin' Excalibur <laughs> strapped to our back now. That's amazing. Uh, okay. So pack means, how do we know what pack is? Ta-da! So pack says, at the start of each combat round, each monster, still alive, beyond the first, adds plus five to its attack value. So we know that we are fighting four ants. So the easiest way that I can think of to do this, just so we can remember, maybe it's easier for you. We are fighting some ants with three hit points, two hit points, three hit points. Do you know how hard it is to find just plain brown dice. Okay, so here are the ants that we are fighting. And the cool thing about fighting a pack enemy is that if I take a big swing, and let's say I do eight points of damage, the damage goes through. So I do three points of damage, five points of damage, eight points of damage, and we're left with one. Okay, but the very first part of combat, do I have this written here on the handy sheet, right? This is awesome. If you look at the top right is combat rounds. That says we roll in 1d10 on the monster reaction table, which is right above us here, to find out how this monster is going to react in combat, right? So what do they do? Hopefully they don't run away. Eight, right? So we go to eight is the monster... Uh, monster has less than half its hit points it will attempt to escape. This is round one, meaning it's not going to attempt to escape. It's just going to attack me. Now we have to determine what we're going to do. We are absolutely going to swing at these guys, right? And combat can go kind of fast with all these low numbers at first because it's a whole lot of missing sometimes. Um, so attack a monster. That's what we're going to do. We're not going to dodge or, or I mean, escape. We're not going to block the escape attempt because they still have more than half their hit points, right? Assuming I'm reading that correctly, right? Um, because it does say, like, we, like, like the, the whole point is we're supposed to know what the monster's going to do ahead of time, right? Roll 1d10 on the monster reaction table to determine its action in the forthcoming round. Then proceed to step two. So we rolled an eight. Monster has less than half HP. It will attempt to escape, right? The player determines the course of act. There are a course of action, and this will greatly depend on the monster's reaction. If the monster's reaction is to escape... The adventurer may attempt to block the escape. So this is this is the like one question about combat, other than like all the defense that we'll get to one day, is like if I hit them and kill three out of four of them, do they then change what they're doing, or do they do what they're going to do now? I think they're just going to attack, right? Because right now that check that we just made doesn't say like in the future they're going to escape. It says right now, do they have less than half? No, so they're not going to attempt to escape, right? Uh, right? Monster reaction table. So it sounds like they're just going to sit there. I guess, I guess maybe not. Maybe they're going to attempt to escape. Maybe that is how that works. And that would kind of make more sense because it doesn't actually say anything about... Uh, well, either way, we need to attack them and we need to do as much damage as humanly possible. So what we do now is we roll again. It's a melee attack. So we're going to roll our strength up here, which is, remember, 55. So we need to roll less than a 55. Okay, and then they, I, I don't know, I guess they attempt to escape if they have less than hit. So we roll a 23. So we hit. Okay, that's good. So how do you roll for damage? Now that's pretty easy as well, right? So we're going to go on to, to attack a monster. The player rolls 1d100 must score equal to or below the adventurer's adjusted strength or dex. Dex for range stuff, right? Um, so you can see their hand weapons use strength while ranged weapons use arc. What do you do if you're like a ranged person and and like you don't start with a bow? Do you like, Or like you put 50 into dex... 30 into strength and, and, and 40 into int. Like, what do you do? Uh, so anyway, here, so we hit the monster. If the character has two weapons equipped, either may be used to attack but not both. The result scores a hit. Go to step four. So now we roll both the, the damage and the hit location die together and apply the damage modifier um, for location and our damage modifier, if any. And it is, I should probably, um, well, this should be totaled up down here at the bottom under totals. If you look at your character sheet, there's a, like a totals at the very bottom, but we only have a plus four in there right now, so it's not hard to do the math. So we roll these two things, and we want a six. Yes, thank God. <laughs> okay, so we got a we got a six and a two. So the first thing is, unfortunately, I really want my dex to be higher, but it's not. So let's let's take a look again at the handy sheet here. Um, and what does it say is a two on the location hit location table? I hit him in the back. I hit a, a pack of giant... I crept up with my giant sword to a pack of giant ants. Whoosh! And this is fantastic because I hit them in the back for plus two damage. So we are already at plus two for hitting them in the back. 
plus four for hitting him here, and six. So that's 12 damage. But remember, we have the skill Mighty Blow. So remember, Mighty Blow says sixes add to the roll if we re-roll it. So we're at 12 damage. They only have nine to 11. Okay, so then they roll a another six. So now we're at 18 damage. Oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. 18, 19. So we did 20 points of damage. We absolutely got the drop on these guys. <laughs> what a combat example. Okay. Um, unfortunately, they don't just die. Okay, so we, 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 we still have to assume that, you know, something's going on for them. So it says if the monster attempted to escape. Now it says monster damage last round and it will attempt to escape. Yeah, see, last round. That's like that's like past tense. Like it's not like I rolled a 10 and they're just gonna leave. This is monster has less than half HP. No, so they're staying and fighting, it sounds like to me. If the monster attempted to escape and it has remained, uh, no, roll both the damage die, blah, 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 blah. If the monster attempted to escape and remain, start a new combat round, otherwise it will make an attack. So now we have to take its attack value into account as well as it defended two of the damage I did to it. So I really only did 18 damage. So I did three to that guy, two to that guy, three to that guy, three to that guy, and there was some overkill here, which is the best way to kill something. There is there is no such thing as too much overkill. So they attack me, their attack value is 25, but all of these guys were alive during combat, or I mean at the start, so it was 25 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. So their attack value is 40 for round 1, okay? 25 plus 15, okay? So they need a 40 or less to hit, and they rolled an 86. So they missed and get absolutely obliterated by me and Excalibur, which is phenomenal. Like, <laughs> this is great. Okay, so we kill them, right? I, I don't even have like a way to mark it, but I do want to say that we get our 100 gold pieces for killing them. That is right there on that sheet. This was a wandering monster. We didn't ask for this. They came up to me, so I'm just going to put a 100 gold right there, and then we get to roll on table P1, right? So we go over to the PDF again, we look at the parts table, we're going to roll our D100 on this, and we've got a 12. And it doesn't matter, right? This, 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 this doesn't matter, right? So we got a 12, and this says we found on, what was it, P1 I said? Yeah, yeah, P1, right. So on P1, we found a claw, an ant claw. It can be ground down and added to tea to cure headaches. So the cool thing about this, let's see, one claw. We can sell this in town, right? This is our, our character's first adventure, right? Like, we just lucked out and found an amazing sword here, but, but like... Normally you don't have that. Like I said, I started this game with a minus two dagger, you know, before. So it was, or a knife. It was a knife. What, speaking of which, just for fun, what did I roll? Just so that everybody knows how this really goes. Like normally. I rolled a knife. I rolled a, I think I rolled a 10, actually. I do, I, I feel like it was a, not a nine. I think I rolled a 10. I had a knife at negative two damage. Let me tell you how much more difficult it was to kill those little ants that I just obliterated. Um, the good news is, and I should probably... Right, do this. So we definitely looted a part from a monster. That's that's one part of our, our starting game quest completed right now. That happened, if you recall, um, right at the top of our of our, our our turn, right? We didn't find that. We could absolutely get into another combat here, right? That was time track. I took one hour off the time track and we got jumped by this guy, by these 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 ants, okay? So I'm gonna flip this over now so I can see my thing here. We already took our one hour of time off of our time track. We're gonna jump into exits now. In this scenario, the only way that this room works, whatever room it was, 66, right? So 66 yellow bends off to the left. We can only go that way, and then there's no locked door or anything, right? So we, we just, we, we resolve exits. Can we go out that way? Yes. Done. There's no doors, there's no locks, blah, 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 blah. So we go to area, which is rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. We have a 12 on the mapping. So 12 on the map this time says, I don't know where my sheet is. It's a, a red room. Now the way that you draw that, right, is, is normally what you would have is a piece of paper in front of you. You'd have this thing in front of you and you rotate this around because your book is going to have this in this direction. You rotate this around so that you're always entering from the bottom of this sheet, right? But we don't have that that luxury here, right? Because I've got this this thing here. So what I have to do is to find room twelve that we rolled, and I'm gonna, I'm coming this way. So I'm gonna draw it like this, right? So I'm gonna draw this room this way. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be like accurate. There's no reason to it. 
All right, so we're going to say this is a red room. It looks like this. And this is where we are. This is room 12. Now, you know, there should be a, a maybe a good way to keep track of where you are. I've got my man Cthulhu here, but I kind of, it's easy for me to remember where I am. I don't need reminders because I'm, I'm, I'm evaluating the room I'm currently in all the time. So I don't think I need like a miniature or a meeple or something. For me, it's easy to remember what room I'm in. The problem comes when you're backtracking, but again, you know, grab a die real quick, move yourself around, you know where you're going. Okay, so that's that's room 12. So what happens in room 12? Let's go back to the turn order. <gasps> it was red, dun dun dun. So red, boom. Red areas are more dangerous, and when first encountered, will contain a monster. Looking in the shadows, roll on the encounter table. We just got to do this. Maybe we'll get this lucky again. We've got a 50 minus 40. This is the encounter table, so we really only got a 10. So what is a 10 on the encounter table here? We've got a 10, which is going to be giant rats. I love the rats. I hate the bats, okay? So <laughs> what's, uh, where, where's my pen? Here's the, oh, it's over here. Okay, so we've got giant rats. Now, if you have all the fancy stuff, like the mapping kit for this game, you're not writing this stuff down. Oh, there's there's cards. I don't think they come with the mapping kit. The mapping kit might just be like little tiles that are room so you don't have to draw them. Um, but there's, uh, there's um, enemy cards. What did I say I rolled? A 10 giant rats. That's right, 25. And so you can just flip the card out. Defense zero. I like that because we might not get to hit that hard. Damage negative two. Hit points three two two. Okay, so there's there's one left. Three two and two. We are rolling on table P two. And these jerks have disease and pack. Okay, so what does that mean? What does pack mean? So. Uh, we know what pack means. I'm sorry, disease. So we know that pack means that they're going to have a bonus to their their roll, and there's only three of them alive now, right? So maybe they're not brown. Maybe we use ants or oh, rats would be a good brown, yeah. All right, well, let's use bright purple. Okay, so what do we got? We got three hit points and two and two. These are our rats. All right, so here's our alive rats. Three hit points, two and two. They're at negative two on damage. They have they have pack and disease, right? So we know what pack is. Uh, disease, where's disease? Disease is the roll one, you get disease, right? When a monster scores a natural one on their damage dice, they infect the adventurer with disease and the player shades in one pip on the disease track on the advance, or on the adventure sheet, even if the monster does not deal any damage during the combat round. Uh, when the time track is finished, the player must roll 1d10. If the result is equal to or less than the number of disease pips shaded on the adventure, <sighs> shaded, the adventurer suffers HP equal to the number of shaded pips. So that's the front of your adventure sheet in green here. You see keys, levers, poison, disease. It's a good system. I like this system an awful lot, especially if you find like a an old key and then you just shade in a pip on your key tracker and you come to a door at some point, you roll a 1d10. If you have one key and you roll a one, hey, that key matched it. Erase it from your keys. It's pretty awesome. Okay, enemies. So we're gonna find out what they do first, right? So monsters, not abilities, handy sheet. Okay, and this is a one page thing, by the way. Like it looks like this in the book and when you print it, I broke this up because the part here on the left is the part I'm going to need to be able to see all the time. So I wanted to be able to read that uh, and make sure that I could, I could see it. Of course, my fat head is in the way, but I'm pretty sure I can count uh, you know, down through my shoulder, and so I know what the rolls are. <laughs> so, okay, so we are rolling for what is the enemy? How do, how do they react? What do they do? They are doing a four, and a four on the on the handy sheet says monster reaction four, the monster will attack. You know what? I'm going to attack as well. So I'm just going to go, go in, and I need, remember, my strength is 40, so I need, um, there's a 10 and a five there, right? Plus, so I have, I have, 40 plus 10 plus 5, so I have 55 strength. So I need less than 55 to hit, and I rolled a 47. So I am going to hit, and we're going to hit on... God, you know what You know what would be great? Maybe is if... Oh, you can't see that. Yeah, that's not big enough. Okay, so we're going to hit, and we hit... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, dear God, I did it again. We hit him in the back, so that's plus 2. Uh, my amazing claymore, which is plus four, is six, and we're going to roll our exploding die plus, I can't believe it. So that's 12, and they have a defense of zero, so we're doing 12 
uh, 17 points of damage and they have just this. Okay, so we're going to obliterate these guys. Now they have an attack value of 25 as well, but there's only three of them, not four. So they're going to be at 35, correct? Right? Because they're at plus five, plus five. So they need a 35 or less to hit me. And they rolled, ooh, they rolled an eight. So they do hit me. And now they are extended the same luxury that I was. They get to roll, right? And so they rolled, ouch, they rolled really well. So they hit me one, right, which is bad, because that's my head, isn't it? Dang, these rats are no joke. <laughs> okay, so that's that's according to, uh, to this, they hit me in the head. Bam! So that's three damage right there, right? Plus the five. They rolled a five. So that's eight damage, but they're minus two because they're just these weak little rats. So they did six damage to me. Now, I don't have a way to not take six damage... Uh, without being incredibly expensive for me, right? So I'm just going to take the six damage. We're going to go from 20 to 14 hit points, all right? Bam! These rats got me good, right? Payback for their brothers. I'm going to change that to 14. So you'll notice primary still says 20, but actual current HP, I drew a little heart there, <laughs> is 14, right? So I took six points of damage. I had no way to defend it. I don't have a helmet. They hit me in the head, and I don't have a shield. A shield you can use to block anywhere, right? Any, any part you get hit. Armor values, that's the little A on your character sheet. A just says, if I happen to get hit in a spot where I have armor, I defend that much of that damage. I don't have a helmet. I should buy a helmet. But then I just whack these guys for 17 points of damage and kill them anyway. So yay us. Why we wrecked these guys. Okay, so disease and pack, none of that mattered at all for them. We don't get a special reward for killing them. However, we do get to roll on table P2. So let's go back to that. Oh, that's weapons. Let's go to parts. Now we're on P2, so let's see what we found. 42. So we found a 42. So 42 on P2 is, it looks like we found a foot worth 15 gold pieces, right? So we found a foot. One foot. 15 gold pieces. Go us. All right. So <laughs> that's not bad. Now, we are still in this room, and it was an encounter room. We got attacked. We didn't get to part four yet. We're on area three. We got attacked. We got banged pretty hard by some rats. However, they did give us our second part. We need to complete this, you know, beginning game quest here. We're in, in room 12. We can still search, though, right? So we search. We're in, we're in this red room 12. Red is a plus 10 on the find. So remember, find is back here. I put it on the back of this. This is table F. Um, so let's roll at a, what did I say it was, plus 10? I've already forgotten, you see? Uh, yeah, red plus 10 on the find chart. So plus 10, we rolled a, so a 25, so a 35. So we, we are looking at 35 on the find chart. So the find chart says 35. So it takes an hour. So we're going to fill that in on our little sheet here. One more hour. It's just blank. We don't get jumped by anybody. Uh, 35 here. Searching for some considerable time, the adventurer finds nothing of any real value. Okay, I mean, you know what? Sometimes that happens. Now, remember, we can only search in a place one time. So we're going to scratch that out or or put, put a little token over it or something, right? Like we searched there. So what do we do? Back to the new turn. Shade in the time track. What happens? Ooh, we got to burn some more oil, right? So we're over here now. We've been in here three, four, five hours. So that is one more oil, all right. We're gonna exit that way. We still don't have a door or anything, right? So we're just gonna roll. Okay, let's see what we got. We have a 36. So what is 36 on the map here, right? 36 is going to be, ooh, another red room. Uh-oh, and I'm gonna have to draw this one. Again, I'm, I'm rotating this page. You normally wouldn't do that. You would, you know, it's just easy to rotate the other thing. We got lucky there were no doors here. I've been straight locked out of some rooms before. <laughs> so, um, and the game does have a, a, um, a, a way to handle what happens if you, um, oh, did I roll, draw the wrong one? No, I drew the right one, right? This one? No, I did. I drew like half and half. Yeah? Oh, no, that's right. 36. It just has this little, like, thing in it. Okay. So, 36 red. There we are. And you can see that. Okay. So there's a, and you know what, if I, even if I mess this up, it, it's not that big of a deal. It's more about the encounter tables and whatnot. Okay. So um, here we are, room 36. We got attacked immediately. Again. What do we have? 
minus 40, remember, so we rolled a 70, so minus 40 is a 30 on the encounter chart. So now we have run into a giant spider. Oh no, giant spider. Is it one? Let's see, giant, I've never fought a giant spider before, so it has a 30 attack value. Giant spider, uh, two defense, minus one damage and 6 HP, and it's on table P1. Giant Spider will do web. I have absolutely no idea what web is. I've never managed to roll this before. Okay, so that was our 30 Giant Spider. Let's see what web does now. Web says, at the end of each combat round in which the monster's still alive, the adventurer makes an avoid web test to determine if they will get an attack or make a combat action in the next round. Whoa, whoa. We gotta avoid that, and that's a dex plus 20. Our dex is not great, <laughs> so our dex is 45, so it'd be a 65 check. Okay, so let's see what this spider is going to do here. So the spider is going to roll an eight, and the eight says they will be, if the monster has less than half, it will attempt to escape, so it's not gonna do that. So I need to hit as hard as I possibly can. I need a 55 or less to hit, and I've got a 32, so I'm gonna hit. And we're going to roll, oh my god, we, so we did, oh, a, ooh, ooh. maybe that's bad, actually. A 10 is a foot hit, so I, I, I mean, that makes sense, it's got eight legs, right? So I didn't hit legs, I hit feet, I guess, so I'm at minus one damage. But I rolled a five plus my four from the cl amazing Claymore is nine, minus one is eight, it has two defense, so I did six points of damage, so I'm killing this fool. Okay, great, what does it do, though? It rolls a 67. It had a 30 attack value. It missed me. We killed the spider. We roll on table P1. So here we are. We killed the spider. We roll a, a 73. A 73 on P1 is an eye. Ooh, well, you know, I mean, it probably had a few of those, right? So we found a spider eye. P1, right? Yeah, that's P1. Yeah, P1, 73. We found an eye. One. Eye. Awesome. Preserving the eye in a jar of vinegar that you carry for just the occasion is worth 18 gold. And just like that, we completed like the, the starting training quest thing, okay? And there's a whole little bit that we can do in the town, which I'm going to have to take a quick break to, and I'll get to in just a minute. We can wrap up this starting quest and, and, and begin, you know, dungeon training too. How incredible was that, <laughs> right? Nice and easy for the very first dungeon training. This is not the epic quest that you're going on right away, right? This is just learn how to play the game, get used to the mechanisms, here's how it goes, and this gets your adventurer set up with some starting gear, you know, and some experience as to, you know, what you find. It's gonna be, you're gonna wind up with like a character coming out of quest five with some random stuff. So what happens? All right, so first thing first, before your next quest, this is what happens. You end your quest. We are done now. We have finished it, right? We did it. You you can immediately bail. We're out of here, right? You don't stay. It's just, uh, you know, it's just, you're done. In fact, I believe, let me pull up the PDF here real fast and see, succeeding and failing quests right here. Completing a quest. Once the objectives have been met, the quest is accomplished and the adventurer received the reward shown. Okay, cool, right? So, uh, it was on Q. Rewards, remember here, it said we gained 50 gold pieces. So I'm going to take this 100 and add 50 to it. I'm just going to put a little plus five zero right there. And we didn't lose half of our gold. That was it, right? Now we got to bounce back over to succeeding and failing quests. Um, okay, adds one to the completed section of their quest log and ticks a check mark in the quest number on the quest tracker. So look at your character sheet here, and on the back of it, in like the, the brown or maroon part over on the far right over there, we'll write a little one for completed, we'll put a check mark in one and two, and so you're just gonna have, you're gonna have this here now. We've completed one quest, and one and two should have a check mark. I'm gonna... <clears throat> use like a green pencil or something as opposed to a check mark, right? So now, this does matter how you mark this. If you fail it, under failed, you're gonna wanna put, you know, one, and then you're gonna make one with an X or like a little red mark or something so that you know that you failed that quest. Because once we get out of the five training quests, then you're rolling for the quest you go on. And if you land on something that you've already completed, it's 
completely different than if you land on something that has no mark in it, which is also different, completely different than if you land on something that has a, I failed this previously in it, right? You're forced to do those again. So it's, it's a little bit different. So that's, that's the, the overall thing right there in the very beginning. Now, some of these are going to have, uh, you know, collect, I, you know, it, th this tells you how to complete a quest, right? This is, you know, in our case, it was loot. Some of them are collect something exploring, or I've seen these in the quest log. They're really cool. They're like, you know, explore to where, until you find five, you know, red rooms and three yellow rooms or whatever it is, right? There's all these like, cool ways uh, to complete these quests. So I do have this handy thing here in front of me, which is amazing, because if you look at the way the game plays, it's these four things, right? Scratch out something on the time track, make sure you can leave the room you're in, roll for a new room, if something happens, do it, and then search the room if you want. <laughs> it plays very quickly. And then yet, after the quest, this little, this town that doesn't exist is, is all this right here. So, what you have to do, number one, absolutely required. It says, the adventurer makes, may seek the services of a healer and remove each... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong one. So poison and, and, and disease you have to pay for and, and your healing. You don't just heal for free, right? Uh, so remove all the shaded pips on the keys and the lever track, right? Obviously the next dungeon you go to isn't gonna have the same keys or the same like doors controlled by levers, right? And then remove all shaded clock faces from the time track. Okay, so you just erase all of those. There you go. And then it says disease and poison pips remain on the track because that's the next part, healing, right? So each poison you can cure for 40 gold, each disease pip for 65 gold. This one's brutal. Each each lost HP is 20 gold. It's not 20 gold to heal. It's, it's and restore lost HP for 20 gold points each, right? So we're six down. So that's 120 gold. So... Brutal. So we have 150 minus 120 to heal our six, right? Because I want to go in full on. So we had 150 minus 120. So we have 30 gold, but we have 20 hit points back. Okay. Then it says, I guess it doesn't say these are uh, step as Let's see. It says, oh, in any order, by the way, <laughs> the player performs the following steps in any order to prepare for the next adventure, uh, uh, next adventure ahead. Good. Okay. But they must always perform the refresh track steps in the Empire building step if they have any shares. Otherwise, all their steps are optional. So one in nine are, are required. Now, then, then sell. So we had, you know, eyeballs, claws, and whatnot. 15, 12, and 18 is 45 gold pieces, right? So we're going to add 45 gold pieces two are what 30 so now we have 75 gold pieces okay well we started the day with zero now we have 75 that's not bad okay now that and the healing you know it's one hit point or, or 20 gold per hit point is, is a little brutal like that's that's rough um but you know we have the option of like you know healing potions to to mitigate that we could have done that during combat nowhere in the rule book do i see where it says you can't just like drink a potion in town i feel like that's just something that you could do like why would there be a rule that says you couldn't drink something that you already have and is on your person on your way out of the dungeon i just i you know it's not specified at least in book one maybe it is in a future book but like as far as i'm concerned why don't we just drink a potion if we want to but i'm going to keep them because they're going to save our lives at some point here uh, repair items. The player can remove any number of shaded pips on any uh, items damage. Oh, you know, I just remembered we have that war pick that is worth 68 gold. I am going to sell it. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I completely forgot about that. I forgot. So 68 plus 75 is going to give us 143 gold. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's better now. That's better, 143, and then I'm gonna get rid of our starting item, the war pick, because we have like this amazing <laughs> sword that we found right away. Okay, so I'm feeling better about our money now. We don't need to heal any poison. We got lucky fighting the rats. They just wrecked us instead of poison, diseased us and wrecked us. Uh, repair items, so here's the thing. So our, our gear didn't get banged up, but our new sword started with two damage on it, right? And it's going to cost 94, so that's 188 gold to repair it completely. We don't have that. We have 143. We could sell a healing potion. I don't remember what it was. Was it 80 gold? Oh, uh, I don't remember what it, what it was. Let's see here. That was... 80 gold pieces each. We could we could we could potentially sell one of those, but like I don't think I'm gonna assign damage to my mighty claymore because I don't want it to break. So I think we're we're probably kind of okay in that department right now. So we have our 143 gold. We can buy needed items. Some items are essential and needed for the next adventure. The 
Okay, so the player may buy a maximum of 20 plus the adventurer's reputation value, which is still one, of items from table N needed by paying the gold piece cost listed and adding them to the adventure sheet. So if we go over to N, it is this very short thing here. So we can see there's, we can buy lock picks for five gold. We can buy rations. We got lucky. We didn't have to use any for 10 gold. Oil though, right? We did start with 20 oil. We did use two to replace those two oil. It's 30 gold. Oil is super insanely expensive. That's craziness. Maybe we just let our oil dwindle, right? So we'll, we'll say we just have 18 now. Uh, because we did use the two while we were in there. And I don't think these starting adventures are going to blow through all of our stuff too much. I just, I, I really don't know. I mean, maybe it's exactly enough to get through most of the time if you don't roll completely horribly, you know, maybe. Uh, so what else do we have here? We have this. Uh, and then the three, the, the four on the right are, are quite different. So search the market. Okay, so now we can roll on table A, which is armor, W, which is weapons, Treasure A, Treasure B, or Treasure C. So I want to show you what those look like here, right? So Treasure A has that little pot up in the top with the little gold in, the, in it, right? All of these do. That's, right, there's Treasure A, same little pot. So any of these four things that have this little treasure thing up at the top, we can say we're going to use as many rolls total, total, right? I get one roll on one chart, okay? So I have one rep. So I'm, I'm strolling into the market going, hmm, okay, what did we find, right? What do we got? What, what, what can I buy? And I have the option to buy this thing, okay? Now, they are undamaged and they have no damage pips on them. We only have one reputation, so we have to just make the call. We may as well find out because it's not required to buy it, right? It's may buy any of the items rolled. We only get one roll. And there's an example there, just in case I'm not being clear. If you had a reputation of three, you could say, I'm going to roll on armor twice, and I'm going to roll on weapons once, right? You, it's a total of three rolls. So what do we try? I feel like armor is where we should we should be focusing, because we have, we have a decent weapon, I think, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and roll here our one rep, reputation. It costs us nothing just to see what it is, right? So we're going to roll on armor. We have a 14 on the armor chart is an oh it's a shield and i wanted a shield so badly and i would love to use my war pick and a shield but it's not going to happen so i choose not to buy the buckler shield <laughs> oh, it's a bummer i really wanted a one-handed axe and a shield in this game but you know what i've got like you know the freaking excalibur here so i think we're in good shape <laughs> this is really funny to me this is blowing my mind so okay so great that's that that was our market training is crazy expensive right so i can Pay 200 gold piece to shade a pip on the, on a skill track. It does not benefit from your experience marker, by the way, which would be double if we actually rolled 10 or less. It would just go up automatically. That This does not count here, right? Um, then we could pay 2,000, or, or we could pay 2,000 gold to shade a pip on the strength, dex, or intelligent tracks, or 20,000 gold to increase our hit point by one. Our hit points by one. Holy smokes. Now, I imagine that... that where 20 grand comes in is probably somewhat related to number nine on this little chart. So real quick here, so number eight is magic tuition. Basically, you get to roll um, on, on the spell chart for what spells are available to you. You get to buy one for a thousand gold if you can afford it. So this is the, the spells list, right? So if I had a reputation of five, I'd roll here five times. All five of those spells are available for purchase for a thousand gold each. I can choose to purchase one. And wow, yeah, that's that's a heck of a way to do it. Um, and it goes on your spell book down here on the bottom of your character sheet, down in the, the purple spot, down there in the center bottom of the front page of the adventure sheet where it says spell book. And they have to fill in top to bottom, right? So, uh, you know, that's, you're going to be building yourself a spell book. And if you sell a spell, you would erase it from like, you know, like, let's say you have six of them filled out and you, you sell the one at plus 10, your next spell you gain goes into that plus 10 spot. So there's a little bit of like a, a, a mini game moving your spells around it seems like i've never cast a spell in this game i've always had a bunch of dumb brutes walking around always i say this is my second time into this game other than the two dungeons i ran around with with you know essentially the same character just different starting weapons and everything and way less luck by the way then there's the last part of the you know in between quest thing and this is the thing that i don't like at all um it's empire building right so in the in the book in this book or the pdf here right you can you can find exactly what i've got on the screen here this is just so it's easier to see for everybody and you can read it while I ramble on empire building is this entire section so so it's like two pages of what to do before your next quest 
Um, maybe three pages because this is lengthy as well. And I don't like this because it doesn't fit what I want out of this game, so I'm choosing to ignore it, which is a viable option, right? I don't have to put my money into shares. So I am going to be skipping the investment role every time. I don't like it. I get that some people might dig it. It's great. You've got all this extra cash. You you put it into investments in, what are they even? Trade, finance, holding in wars. The cyan part of the back of your sheet there. You can buy a whole share in trade for 100 gold, right? But then you roll on the sheet and it goes away or it goes up. I just, I, you know, whatever. I just, I don't know. And then you can sell pieces of it. You can't buy an individual pip. You have to buy a whole share. Let's see here. They go, so a, a pip is worth one fifth of a share. I, I just don't, don't care for it. I just don't care for it. I want nothing to do with any of that. I just want to be my guy. I'll pack all my money around and I'll take the risk of losing half of it if I die in a dungeon or if I bail on a quest. That's just, them's the breaks rather than invest it into the market here that is rolling on J and seeing if I gain or lose pips, right? They're not even like, I'm not going to say they're not like balanced. I'm, I'm sure that they're, they're finely tuned, but they're just, they're like, not all of them should go down at the same time, I feel like, and not all of them should go up at the same time. I almost feel like it should be two go down, two go up, you know, like maybe it's plus one share, plus three share, minus three share, minus one share, you know, like maybe things are just fluctuating in the in the market and everything. And I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. You can do it. Have fun. Knock yourself out. Get into the investments. I want nothing to do with it. It's this whole thing here. I mean, maybe we'll do it at some point. We'll throw in a hundred bucks just to see what happens and then become day traders and we don't need to go into the dungeon. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, I don't care for it. It's just not my vision of what this, this game needs to be, like what I'm looking for in it. Um, but it does exist if you want to invest uh, your money. And then you can, of course, sell your shares and pips or whatever, I don't know, uh, and, and get some money back. I'd rather just tote it all around and I'm just going to pretend that every, I don't know, let's say 100 gold pieces winds up being a platinum and then platinum becomes something else. You know, it does whatever the case is, you know. Um, I would prefer to have a thing where it was like, you know, I have a a bank back in town or, a, a, you know, I go back to my house and, and I, I leave it with the innkeeper, you know, or I go to my house and put it in a stash or I bury it under a tree or something. Like there's some way to not lose all my cash. If, if, why would you take any money into the dungeon, right? Like, why would I take any? Well, I'm going into a dungeon. I'm not going to, I'm not going to run into a trader. I mean, maybe I am. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I just, I don't know. I think it's kind of weird. Um, but whatever. I, I feel like I'm just going to pack my money around. And if I lose, I lose and I lose my money. And that's just life. And it just gets harder. And you know what? Sometimes them's the rolls, right? Sometimes that happens. So here was our amazing three room dungeon that we completed for dungeon training one. I'm going to get all this stuff squared away here, and um, I guess I'm going to... I, you know what? I think I will buy the oil just so I don't have the money, and maybe blow the rest of the money on, on lockpicks, just so that we don't go into the dungeon with a bunch of, of uh, money, just in case we do have to bail, because my last, my one and only other previous character to this, when I was getting ready for this, I, I, I you know played it to figure it out. I got to quest number two, Dungeon Training 2, and that guy had to leave the quest both times. Uh, and I lost, you know, th their money. So maybe I will spend the money on some some picks and, and just uh, uh, see how it goes from there. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So we'll be, we'll be back with Dungeon Training 2 in just a minute here. I want to try to surprise you and show you that, uh, you know, I already wrote everything down there, but uh, you already know it's there, so it's not such a surprise. So this is Dungeon Training 2. Here's what it looks like in the actual book on the quest log here. You see that's quest number 324, Dungeon Training 2. Encounter mod is negative 30. Success is gain 50 gold pieces of failure. God, that's two and a half hit points worth of healing. A failure is lose half your gold, enter the dungeon, and loot three weapons from the monsters there. That's, that's our quest, okay? Now, I'm going to come completely clean here. Remember, before this video, I had attempted this as well with a completely different scrubbed character. Same name, still warrior, still dwarf. That's just the guy I make. But um, I have been chased out of this dungeon training quest both times. And then, and then here we are now with a whole new character and, and playing again. So that's, that's the extent of my experience with D100 Dungeon Book 1. Is this dungeon we're about to get into right here. And I had to leave because I just couldn't, I couldn't get weapons from monsters. So, so the thing I think I've learned is that searching and finding monsters doesn't count, right? It says loot three weapons from 
monsters, very specifically loot three weapons from the monsters there. You'll also notice we only have a negative 30 on our encounter modifier. So when we're here, now we can get all the way up to giant apes, it looks like if we roll the 100, and they have eight, eight, and nine hit points. Oh my goodness, okay. So this, this is gonna get significantly tougher, but let's give it a go here. So again, we're gonna go from the top. We have to spend some time. That's gonna cost us an oil. Oh, and in between, I did end up buying um, oil. I bought two more oil and 15 more picks, just so I have maximum picks. So I have 10, well, I have 19 oil now. Uh, 10 food, 30 picks, which brought me down to 38 gold pieces. So we're not bringing a whole lot in here this time anyway. All right, let's see what the survey says for the room. We have a 39, 39, 39, 39. Yeah, you can look at that. I'm gonna look at this. It's a green room. Do I have a green pen? I do. How fortunate for us. It's almost like I planned this. Okay, so let's see here. In this room, oh no. <laughs> Okay, so this is completely different than before, uh, meaning that we start the game with a door here, right? So there's a door in this room. That's terrible. And we might have to find out if it's locked or not. Now, my understanding of this might be completely wrong here. So let's see, that's room number 39. Okay, so here we are. 39, we have our room and a door so i'm going to draw just like on the map there's a little door like so and we don't know if it's opened or closed yet i think if we look at this it says exits if this is the very first turn of the quest place the dungeon sheet with the dungeon entrance at the bottom of the page proceed to steps three otherwise the player must choose an exit that the adventurer will move through so we're not moving through anything yet we have just come into here so this is room one i don't know maybe this is maybe we came from a little i don't know we came out of our our house and we found this in the nearby mountain range and here we are and the first thing is this is a green room of 39 so remember green rooms have something special they are geographic green areas contain random features that may restrict movement cause damage or offer rewards the player rolls on table g geographic and follows the instructions now this G is by far the most interesting rooms because the chart is like four or five pages long. It is fascinating. Look at this. It's a D100, and on page one, it only goes to 15. All right, so that's page, what, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Right, look at how many pages there are for geographic. So <clears throat> let's, uh, let's see what we find here. In, uh, or not find, but let's see what kind of room it is here. Geographic room of eight, uh, 60, 65. I couldn't find a better percentile die with bigger numbers on it. I was hoping to find something, but funny story. Turns out I don't own any. <laughs> uh, all of my dice are 30 years old. They're all chess X dice from when I was playing Advanced Dungeons and Dragons in the mid 90s. I don't, I literally don't have one of these. And this came from, I lucked out. I think I have two of these actually. And these are from the D&D 5th edition starter kits. And I just happened to have bought those recently because they were like 12 bucks at Target. And I thought, well, these would be fun to have. I didn't know they came with dice. It's the only reason why we even have a percentile die here is thanks to that. So here we go. Not that I have to have one. There's actually an off-colored die I use that's different than all the rest of my collection. We named it Deathbringer back in the day. That's right. We were some pretty, pretty awesome 15-year-olds. <laughs> so what did I say that was? 65 on the chart. Let's see here. We have that is 15. We have 65. Five, right here. So we have a chasm. A vast chasm crosses from the top right-hand corner to the bottom left-hand corner of this area. How specific. It is so vast and deep it cannot be crossed and exists on the opposite side or an exits on the opposite side of the chasm cannot be used. Draw the chasm on the dungeon sheet and add chasm G65. Okie dokie. So we have this big chasm here. It's just not great. Okay, so what did it say to write? Chasm. This is funny. I've, I have no idea what this is here. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Opposite side of the... So the, the, the exits on the opposite side of the chasm can't be... Oh, the, oh no, so I can't leave the... <laughs> I can't draw the chasm on the dungeon sheet. Oh, no. Okay, so this is an interesting situation. I'm actually kind of glad this came up because what happens now? 
There's no exits on the side here, and we cannot use this door because there's a chasm here. That's where we're stuck, right? Like there is literally, this is impassable terrain for us because we can't, we can't go there. There's a chasm here. We can't fly or anything. This is a terrible chasm. Um, but here we are. We're stuck. <laughs> so what does this say? Now, I'll never be able to find it, I'm sure, in time. But if I remember correctly, the, uh, the game does talk about how you can find a secret passage. Now, it doesn't require you to... God, I'll never find it. Um, it doesn't require you to, like, roll or anything. It just says that you get to do it, right? Because obviously this situation could happen where, you know, what do you do? You all of a sudden are, are screwed, you know? Like, that's really all there is to it. There's just literally nothing you can do if you can't get into um, an exit, right? Like, this this would be the end of our dungeon and we would have to bail our quest, and that's lame, right? Um, so I don't think that I'll, I'll be able to find it here. Um, but somewhere in here it does talk about it, and it's a bummer that I don't know where it is, because I'd love to tell you. You know what? It's got to be down, yeah, over here somewhere. <clears throat> Some geographic features span across an area from corner to corner, blocking exits on opposite sides. Draw the features as creative you, creatively as you can. Well, I'm terrible at drawing, so for any reason you press it, maybe I... Yeah, that's a bummer. The exit's blocked. Wow, this this whole thing here is pretty wild. But it doesn't tell me. I'm sure that it's here somewhere. Like I know I read this. Basically, you just have like a secret door and I'm sure it's it's oh, right here. If for any reason, here we go. Okay. Yeah, it's this. I can't I don't know why this thing's not letting me highlight today. There we go. Okay, right there. So that's the thing. If for any reason your progress through the dungeon has been blocked because all the exits lead to solid walls, you are permitted to draw a secret passage through the dungeon wall of any area you have mapped so far to continue with the quest. So, I mean, it sounds like... they're The problem is they're not all solid walls here, right? Like, this is... Uh, wow, what a, what a one-off scenario is this? I don't even know what to make of this now, right? Like, like, do we just have to fail? Because it's not solid walls. Huh. <laughs> so, wow. Um, we have no way to cross the chasm. We have no way to do anything. This must be a situation that is incredibly rare. For any reason, your progress through dungeon has been blocked because all the exits lead to solid walls. It doesn't lead to a solid wall, is the problem. It leads to a chasm. Mark them. When it has been used, it's let's see, a shrine can be used again. It just talks about draw the chasm and it blocks an exit. That has to. Unbelievable. We're just going to have to house rule this that we found a little secret passage through on this side that is that is open, okay? Because there's nothing I can do. I can search the chasm, though, so we may as well do it. How terrible. Wow. <laughs> what a first turn. And, of course, this happens. This is made it a plus five roll, by the way. So we're going to search, and we 32 plus five, yeah? 32 plus five, so that's going to be on the find. All right, 32... Plus five puts us at, uh, yeah, plus five is green. This is a green. Right, so we're at 37. So plus one time. So we're going to scratch off one more hour. We fooled around the chasm here to try not to fall in. <gasps> we found a secret passageway. Maybe that's the deal. Maybe you have to search, and if you need it, you found it. Maybe maybe that's the deal I make with myself where it's okay. After a lot of digging through a, a little more than junk, the adventurer eventually wipes away the dirt to reveal something of value. Roll on table I... Items. All right. So not only did we find a secret passageway, <laughs> um, but we're going to roll on table I for items. And we found ourselves a 68. Okay. So a 68 is going to be on the second page here. We found ourselves a money pouch. This pouch contains some gold coins. Now, it doesn't say that I have to write in like little pouch. You know, this is this is just a bag of money, so I'm going to add a, uh, not 170 gold, it says. This pouch contains gold coins. 70 gold. So we're just going to add 70 to our 138, and now we have 108 gold. I like it. I'll take it. 
Oh, and look, we found a secret passageway out of here. <laughs> How funny that this happened to me. Okay, so of, of course it did. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going over here now because I can't go that way, right? Like, like, like if this place is broken off this way, this exit and this exit I can't use. So I'm just going to have to say that I found a little secret passage this way. Ooh, we have to cross off an hour and we have to roll for a wandering monster as we're trying to shimmy through the thing here, right? So this is a four we're rolling. We want higher than a four. And we have a six, so no wandering creature. That's good news for us because I really didn't want to stop here and fight anything just yet. Although, although I did, uh, I do need to find some items. So we have to roll kind of high on our, our battle, right? Like we have to like kill some guys and roll high on like our loot table um, or our, our encounter table. So, okay, so here we are. Let's go ahead and roll on the mapping now. We found our secret passageway and we rolled a 53. Actually, it's way easier for me to see on the screen than look over here. 53 on the map looks like 53 red. And we're going to be coming in from this angle here. And it's another dead end. <laughs> okay, so basically, yeah, we're going to be doing another secret passageway here. This is maybe this is just a whole dungeon full of secret passages. Maybe that's how that looks. And this is room 53, a red room. Okay. All right. Well, we know that red rooms are encounters, and we know we have an encounter mod of negative 30 this time, so we can fight stronger creatures. This feels like it's a giant waste of ink for me. Okay. That's <laughs> 53, right? 53, 53, 53. It's another dead end, so that's kind of a bummer, yeah? All right, so what do we fight? Now, remember, our encounter mod is negative 30, so we rolled a 17. 17 on the encounter, which I had to scrub the encounter sheet clean, is now... Ooh, we also searched in the chasm room. Okay. So the combat track says, what did I say? Minus 30, 17. Giant bats. Oh, I hate these guys. Giant bats. Giant bats. And the giant bats are a 25 attack value, a zero defense, a negative three damage. That's nice. But the bad part's coming up. Two, three, three, right? So two, three, three. Let me get some dice out here. Two, three, three. Ooh. Let's use these. Two, three, three. And then we have giant bats, two, three, three. Table P4. That's not what I want. See, I want a weapon. I don't want a body part, right? So they have, they have problems. They have fly, surprise, and pack. Okay, so pack is beneficial to us that insofar that, you know, our, our big whack will go through and kill more than one. They have two, three, and three hit points. Our problem is going, and defense of zero, that's good too, and a, def, a damage of minus three. Yeah, that's right, that's not so bad. The problem is surprise and fly, because if we go to our handy sheet, nope, our monster ability sheet. Um, so surprise, okay, so fly. An adventurer fighting a flying monster suffers negative 10 strength when making an attack roll. If using a ranged weapon, dex has no effect. So our, our attack roll is 55, so it's only gonna be 45 this time. Oh my goodness, so less than half of a chance to hit these guys. Uh, we know what pack does now, right? Pack is just they get extra, um, attack value, uh, the more of them that are, are alive, and surprise is the one where I have to roll right now. The monster may surprise the adventurer when it first appears. Before the first round of combat begins, make a surprise test. If the test fails, the monster makes an immediate attack roll against the adventurer. Surprise int minus 10, and I do get an aware bonus over there. So if you see that, do, are we aware? We are not aware. So we don't get the aware bonus of that. So we are straight up just int minus 10. Our int is 20. So we have to roll a 10. And the good news is if we roll said 10, we would get an experience point for it anyway. So I think they're just going to get a free attack on us. Yeah, I rolled a 33. Okay, so they're going to attack me. They have an attack value of 25 plus 5 plus 5, right? So we have an attack value of 35. They get to attack for free, and they rolled a 68. So, you know, there we are. We squeak through our little secret passageway. I would draw over this, but I don't know if it matters or not. There we go. There's a little secret passageway. And we sneak through it, and just as we come into this cave that nobody's been in in a while, maybe the only way into the cave is from a top. That's how these bats got in there. Ah, they panic, and they start flying around us but they didn't hit us 
But now we have to roll four. There it is. We want the monster reaction table. How are they going to react in this combat? Ooh, I'm going to throw the die way out here. All right, so we got to look at how they're going to roll. Uh, they got an eight. I, how come I keep rolling an eight for this, right? So eight says monster has less than half HP. It will attempt to escape. I don't think that applies on the first like round, right? Like they're going to attack us, right? Because this this decision of their AI is made now, right? Monster has less than half HP. No, if it does, it will attempt to escape. So instead, it's going to attack. So now we get to roll an attack. And remember, we're at, we're at a disadvantage because they're flying jerks. So we're at minus ten. What did I say that is? So we're at only a 45 to hit. 45, let's see it. We got a 28, we hit them. Good deal. Now they have essentially eight hit points here. So let's see, let's, let's hit the bats in the face. Uh, four and seven, right? So the seven is, uh, I hit them in their off weapon, right? <laughs> so I don't think that matters. So I hit them for four plus four damage because again, our mighty Claymore is truly mighty and does plus four damage, and their defense is zero. So we're gonna hit four eight, which is just enough to kill. Four plus four is eight, two plus three plus three, that is also eight. So we're gonna kill them, but they get another attack at me, and they have a, what did I say, 25 plus 10, so they have a 35. 35 attack value, 34! <laughs> Come on! Oh no! <laughs> Well, they're going to hit me, but they're going to die. So they hit, of course they hit hard, man. All right, what do they got here? A four and a five. So the location is just hands, and they're going to hit for four minus three damage. Oh, that's right. They're bats, right? So they're, they're at minus three damage. So I get hit for one point. I'll take it. I'll take it. Now, the option I have, I got hit in the hands. My hands are a zero. Oh no! My hands are an armor too. My bad. I was looking at the wrong. I was thinking of, of my arms. No, no, no. I, I just realized I have. Oh yeah, I have legs. Okay, I was gonna say I'm like a I'm like a character in Wow. I got no pants on. Um, yeah. So I do have a two armor on the male hand wraps. Now I know we haven't talked about this yet because defense is a beast. So we're gonna we're gonna just we're gonna I guess go over it now. This is gonna be man. Dungeon training two is quite the learning here for all of us. Okay, so male hand wraps on my hands. You'll see it says A two. I have armor two. Now I only got hit for one point of damage because they're at four minus three according to their little chart. So they hit me for one. This says I have an armor rating of two on that, so I'm not going to take any damage whatsoever. I'm going to pull this up in the PDF here, assuming I can find it here quickly. I want to talk about how the combat actually works, because this is by far the most complicated part of it. I just don't see it where I want to see it, which is a real bummer here. Oh man, if the monster attempts to escape, roll damage. There's no such thing as unarmed combat, casting spells, escaping, block escape change it here okay so look at this this is a madhouse right here so this is how defense works this is the most overcomplicated part of this game it is it is it it's it's not that hard though but it's just kind of a weird thing okay so when an adventurer is damaged in combat, I can deflect some damage to items I have equipped. It's entirely optional, and I may always allow the damage to be dealt to the adventurer. Okay. And shields are completely different, by the way, right? Shields shields are anywhere, but I got hit in the in the in the four, right? Which was where <laughs> I got hit in the arms. So if we look at our character sheet, arms, I happen to have leather arm guards. Oh, did I say hands? Was I wrong that whole time? I thought I hit a Oh no, it was this. It was a five. I did. It was this. It was the it was the D10, not the D4. It was right. It was four damage, right? Four damage minus three is one damage, and I got hit in five, which is hands, which is my male hand wraps, which has an armor rating of two, right? So back to the PDF here. Okay, so uh, if uh, items such as weapons and armor can be used to deflect up to two points of damage dealt to an adventurer, if they're equipped to the location the monster has struck, the damage is instead applied to the item's damage track at the rate of one pip for each point deflected. Okay, so note that when an item's damage track is full, it's been destroyed and is removed. Now, stopping there, that is that is if I choose to, to, to just take this hit, right? To just take this damage here, okay? So it gets a little weird. Do they even talk about the A rating on this whole page or is it like the previous page? No, this is, it's super weird how this all works, right? Okay, 
So let's read the example. An adventure has a shield. It's a shield, not an armor. Shield. So shield is S4. The only place S shows up is right here on your offhand because you can wear a shield. If you're looking at your character sheet here, right, offhand, all the way over to the right under the A slash S rating, there's an S under shield over there and the rest are armor ratings. Okay. So yeah, this, this gets a little weird. Okay. We were going to have to do this at some point. We may as well do it here on Dungeon Training too. Uh, so an adventurer has a shield with a rating of four and has just taken seven points of damage to the head. The player decides to use the shield and can deflect between one to four points of damage from the attack because the shield has a rating of S4. The player defects the full amount and shades two pips on the shield's damage track, half a pip for each full damage point deflected, and is now left with three points of damage. Right? Seven minus four is three. The R the adventurer is also wearing a leather cap, armor zero, and because the monster rolled a hit location to the head, in our case the hands, the player can deflect up to two points of damage to the cap. The player deflects the damage and shades in two pips on the leather cap's damage track, which further reduces the damage dealt by two points, leaving just one point of damage to be suffered. That's a really bad example because it doesn't talk about just armor. So in the defense bonus, now this is a whole separate thing. Right, so defense is a completely different thing than armor, which is a completely different thing than than just eating it and damaging your equipment. Right? Oops. Uh, here, so you can see here, there's a defense track. Um, and, you know, if you look at all your gear, there's strength, dex, int, HP, damage bonus. We have a you know plus four thanks to our mighty claymore. Then there's a defense track. Right? How does defense work? Is it just added to armor? No, it is completely different. So. Some items provide an adventurer with a defense bonus. Items that have a defense value are added together to create a combined defense value. Now, in my other character, the first guy I played through two quests of here, he found like a magical item that was like 0 0.2 defense, right? So it was useless until, but once you add all that stuff up, you might have a whole number there, okay? Um, which, uh, so when you create that combined defense value, which is checked each time a monster attacks the adventurer, when the monster scores a natural result that is equal to or less than the adventurer's defense value on the damaging dice, the total amount of damage is reduced by the adventurer's defense value. An adventurer defense value may well increase to quite a high number. However, defense has its limitations. Therefore, even when the adventurer has accumulated defense above five, a monster's natural damage roll of six is never checked against the adventurer's defense value. Whew. And that still didn't talk about armor. Okay, so here's an example here that I see an A in there. So Denny has a defense of two. So that means that this Denny character must have like a helmet that is like a a 0.6 and a and a cloak that is a 0.6 and a and a breastplate that is a plus eight or plus 0.8, right? So that's that's a total of 2.0 defense. So we'll just pretend that we have those three magical items, okay? Denny has a defense of two, and a monster with a damage plus two has just scored a hit to her head, right? So we know that's five damage plus whatever the die roll was, right? Because three for the head, two for the plus two damage, that's five plus the roll. Luckily for Denny, she is wearing a male coif with an armor value of a two. She rolls the monster's damage die and scores a one. Then she modifies the result of the monster damage modifier of plus two and adds three because it hit her head for a total of six damage, right? So in our case... They rolled a 4 minus 3, 1, right? Okay, so they rolled a 1. Now, because the monster rolled a natural 1, let's see here, 1 that she modified, yeah. However, because the monster rolled a natural 1, which is equal to and less than her defense 2 value, she can instantly deduct her defense value from the monster's damage total. This brings the damage down to 4, right? Let's see here. Did I read where it said, yeah, it scores a one. She modifies it. Plus two plus three gives us a six, right? So, so the magical defense, right? Like this, this, this defense aura, this just my stuff is, my, my stuff is better than yours, right? My defense two value, she can instantly deduct her defense value from the monster's damage total. This brings the damage score down to four, right? Because she had that magical aura of two. Next, because she's wearing the male coif, she can deduct its armor value two from the monster's damage score, which leaves her two damage. Finally, she then decides to deflect the last two points of damage to the male coif and shades in two pips on the damage track, which reduces the damage to a total of zero. So hopefully that made sense. We got hit for one. It hit our hands. We have an armor of two. We got hit for one, so we're not taking any damage. Hopefully we never have to do that again. And then we hit it for just, we happened to hit it for eight points of damage, which already wiped the dice away apparently. So we killed them. And guess what? Not only do we get our 100 gold piece reward, so we're just going to fill that in right now. I'm just going to put plus 100. 
All right, then we get to roll on P4. So let's go over to P4. Now I know that that whole damage thing is a little crazy. It just is, and it's not that hard. It really isn't that hard once you read it. It's just a lot of words for, you know, maybe a slightly crazy thing. Uh, oh, that's not the chart I want. I swear to you, I clicked P. Nope, all right, we're rolling on P4, it looks like here. So what do we got? What did this, you know what I could do? This might be better in this particular game is put the dice rolls over the PDF. That might be an idea. So I rolled a nine. I rolled a nine on P4, which is bone. We found a bat bone. <laughs> bone. Okay, so we're going to put quantity one bone. And that's a nine on P4. Keys, fire pokers, and kebab sticks. Everything has its uses. Eleven gold pieces. I'm loving it. All right. So now we are. We find ourselves in this red room here with no friggin' way out. So we're gonna have to do the secret room, you know, hack again to get get ourselves out of here. But we can also search red rooms now. Remember, searching a room here, uh, add the following modifier for the area the adventure is currently in, plus 10 on a search. So let's go ahead and burn some time and search in here. Right? We might not have to burn time, but, you know, we'll see. So we got an at least a 27, uh, or a 17, I mean, at least a 17 because we're plus uh, 10, yeah? So we got a 37 is what we wind up with because we're plus 10. So we are, we are 30 seven here right on our find chart this is a red room 37 says plus one time so we're going to shade off another time okay and um after a lot of digging throughs a little more than junk the adventurer eventually wipes away the dirt revealing something of value roll on table i items okay so let's see what we got here now table i items oh i thought i hit the button there we go what did we find we found a 45. We found a 45. 45 is a bone key. I, lo <laughs> I love it. All right, so we also, that means we searched in here. I don't know the best way to do this. I think if I scribble them out, it might be the best bet, but I'm going to use these little bingo chips I've got here. What did I roll? 45. Bone, oh, that's right. I can hear myself saying it like that. Bone key, right? Like I'm a... I don't know. <laughs> Carved in bone, shade in one pip on the key track and add the key to the adventure sheet. This is exciting. This is the first time I've ever found a key. So what they're telling you to do is if you look at your character sheet in the green section there where it says keys, we shade in one of those pips now. And if we can ever, ever find a door, we can possibly roll to actually open it with our key. I already put the bone key on there. Bone key, did I? Oh, that's not what I want right here. Bone key. I'm just going to say it again because I like it. Bone key. Oh, no, I didn't. I wrote bone. I have a bone key now. So one bone key. <laughs> 42. I hope my neighbors can hear me up here saying this. <laughs> All right. So we've got... <laughs> Uh, that was it. So we searched in here. We're all done. Now, now again, you know, top of the round, we're going to have to go and this quest is much more like a regular quest, by the way, right? Like where we're, we're having to find monsters and get certain roles and everything. Cause we've got to get three items somehow without dying. Um, I am checking off what now? What did I want? A time. Uh, that's another candle. So there's some more more oil gone and we're gonna have to use our little uh, magical hack to come up to this room up here right so we're gonna go up into that room this is where we are now let's go ahead and roll on the mapping sheet um, I actually do like the idea of, of flipping around the way this is oh I wonder if I can do it from here hang on just a sec let me see if I can do this without finding a way let's see PDF I don't actually have it here Dice tray. Hold on, I might be able to fix this real quick because this will be kind of cool. I ne I've never had a game where I had the PDF up so much. And so I don't know if, I didn't know if I would use this or not. So now, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, that's pretty sweet. All right, let's go ahead and lock this in. Hopefully that's gonna work fine. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so what am I rolling for now? The room we're going into. So if I pull up the map, oh, of course, this is, I'd have to change every single graphic. <laughs> Sorry, it's not gonna happen. All right, but at least that works for the PDF. Okay, so we rolled a 44, it looks like. Dang, I should totally take the time to fix those because in this particular game, I think it'd be worth it to have have that over all of the graphics. I really do, over all the charts. There's not that many. 
Uh, okay, so 44 on our room exploration. What was that now? So this is 44 is a green room. Hey, it's got exits on it. Look at that. We might not be completely uh, using the secret room hack next time. All right, so this room is shaped like this and like this and like... Okay, so we can go left and right out of this room. And there's some little crap in here, little... Little little things. 40, 44. What a good room. All right, 44. I think we definitely have to search in this room. Okay, how funny is it going to be if we can actually find a way to get to the other side where that door would do us no good, but yet it's still a legitimate thing we could open? And what if we found a way to, like, fly? <laughs> That'd be pretty incredible. All right. So we have our secret door here, there we go. We found a secret passage, and we are in 44, and so those tell us that we have to do what now? Green, geographic, that's right. Roll on table G, PD, whoa. PDF G, where are we? Geographic, right here, okay. So, oh, that's right, we, see the PDFs we can roll over now, right? Yes! Oh, that's so much better. Yeah, I like the idea of changing that now for all of them now that I've seen it. Okay, so 34. So 34 on the geographic room here. So let's find out what that is here. 34, 34. Oh, this one has its own like sub chart. The area contains a number of barrels the adventurer can spend some time opening. Optional. By rolling 1d10 on the table below and adding plus one to the time track, add barrels G33 to the dungeon sheet and mark with a check if you decide to open them. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do barrels. What did it say? G33. Barrels G33. Okay. Now, what can we find in there? We can find a giant spider, <laughs> a bunch of empty barrels. Most of the barrels are empty, but if you have something, roll some needed stuff. Uh, worthless clothes in one barrel is a weapon. Roll on table W for weapons. At the bottom is some armor. Roll on table A. So, I mean, it basically sounds like we give up a time to have a like almost a like a like a forty percent. Like, I guess a third. I mean, sorry, a thirty percent chance of, of fighting a spider. Which I don't in particular want to fight the spider. We have, a, we have, we have, uh, right? Like the spider doesn't give me anything, right? Like I'm gonna get what? I'm gonna get a bone from the spider or something again, or an eyeball. I don't want that. What I want is to do our quest, which is we need to loot three weapons from monsters. This could cost us some time. It's kind of fun though, right? So that's that's the room. Does that count? That that that's. Hold on, let me go back here. So that's. That's the room. So let's see. That's not even searching. That's just we came into the room and had this. We didn't actually like search. This is just a thing in the room, right? So we could still search. Okay, forget it. Let's do it. Why not? Let's let's check these off. These barrels. I'm gonna put an X through it. We we haven't searched here yet. We're gonna roll a D10 and see on the chart what happens. We've got. Come on, give me the big ten. Seven, most of them are empty. A few have something of interest. Roll on table N, needed two times. Okay, so let's jump on down to N, and we get to roll on this table twice, yeah? All right, what do we find? Maybe we can find some potions that are worth something? All right, so one roll is a 96. A potion of lesser cure disease. I like it. Potion of Lesser Cure Disease. I'm going to put it in my backpack for now. 96. Drink to remove up the two shaded pips on the disease track. Yes, that's going to save some money. Hey, yeah, going through these barrels was awesome. And putting these dice over this is way better. I like it. Okay, so 21. You guys can see this at the same. And food. So we can't carry over our max food, which is a huge bummer, I assume, anyway. Uh, so we're just going to say there's some food that, oh, I guess we're just going to leave it there to rot. 
All right, so back over here to the main adventure. We can still search this room. I don't see why we wouldn't do such a thing, right? So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna just cut this real quick here, only so that I can fix it, so that the die rolls go on top of the graphics. They usually don't because I don't want that to happen, but I think in this case, I definitely want that to happen. Um, well, maybe we do this first and finish it so it'll be the top of the round so I don't forget where I am. So we're gonna search in the green room which is find, right, because see, this won't roll over it, right? I would have to go to the actual PDF like this and go roll on find. Um, and then remember, this is plus five because it's a green room. And here we have a 50, 54, 54, so it's plus one more time. Oh, that's a wandering monster because we just had to do two, right? Um, 54, something catches the eye and the adventurer finds something useful. Roll on table N. So let's pop back over to N, and then we have to roll for the creature, so we might be stuck here for a minute. Uh, four, <laughs> a lock pick which I can't use. Okay, so <laughs> there we have it. Zero, four, no good. Okay, so now we have to roll, if you look at your character sheet, we just shaded in another time, right? The five down there, so we have to roll six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 to not be in a fight. A three, so we're in a fight, oh no. Uh, okay, so suddenly we have to do, yes, yeah, because see, this chart won't work. So if I pull up the encounter PDF, you can see at the same time, I, yeah, I like this better. Sorry, I didn't think this through ahead of time. Uh, 55 minus 30, so 25, we are fighting giant ants again. See, and I don't, I don't want to fight giant ants. I want to roll better, right? This is minus 30 is our encounter modifier, so... 25 is giant ants, giant ants, and they have an attack value of giant ants, oh 20, did I write 25 last time? 20 and then 2 and minus 2 giant ants, and then 3, 2, 3, and 3, and they are table P1 and their pack. Hack enemies. Okay, so we got this. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put out some dice here. What I decide ants were the brown ones, I guess. Three, 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 and two. So here's our giant ants that we're fighting. Here's their hit points. Three, two, three, three. They're pack creatures. They don't have any special abilities. So if uh, we have to roll for what do they do, they are going to... Right, because see, how handy would it be to roll this die and you'd be able to see the result and then we could look at, you know the monster reaction table and it's a four so they're going to attack yeah i'll fix this okay so they're going to attack but i'm going to roll first and i get my full damage or my full strength roll which is 40 plus 10 plus 5 is 55 i'm going to attack with a 14 so i hit him and we're gonna hit him with a with a five damage on a one i think that's minus one yeah one is a uh, head. No, it's the other way around. So one, in my mind, I want to roll high, right? So I'm thinking a 10 would be a headshot, not a one. But here, the D10 is a one headshot plus three. So I just hit for five plus three plus four. So 12 points of damage. Okay, great. So we're going to kill these guys because they have 9, 10, 11. Again, how funny. So now they get to roll against me, but their attack value, because there's so dang many of them, is 20 plus 15. So they have a 35. They have a five. Ugh. So they're going to hit me, and they hit me. With, why couldn't I roll a five? I'd get an experience bump for that. All right, so they're going to hit me five. Where is that at here? Location table five in my hands. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's where my armor is. Bring it on, fellas. And they get a negative two to their damage, right? So their damage was a four. Minus two damage is a two. Minus two for my armor is a zero. I got a free kill on some giant ants. Let's go do pack, I mean pack, part, part. We're gonna roll a, um, I should actually roll right in here like what we get. They're dead, they're dead. Um, a P, uh, P1 table here. So we're gonna get parts on P1. We found 64, we're gonna, we're gonna loot saliva or venom. What is, what are, giant ants, okay. One, saliva. What did I roll? I don't know why I can't remember. 64 on P1. Saliva. A vial earns a fair price at the annual Mystics Convention for 17 gold pieces. All right. Just going to let you know now, because I've probably never mentioned this before. My tolerance level for 
goofery is is pretty low, right? Like I find that this game, everything here has been fine, but there are games I cannot tolerate when they're just like a little bit too goofy, let's just say is the word, right? There's there's things that I have concerns with. Like, I've never played Sword and Sorcery, Immortal Souls, but I, I've heard here and there that's like, oh, there's a lot of, like, you know, pop culture reference stuff, and I hate that stuff. Um, give it to me a little bit more serious, and even if it's tongue-in-cheeky sometimes, I can take it, right? Like, I have no reason not to buy that there's not an annual mystic convention, you know, or whatever. I, I can dig on that. Okay, so we had a saliva. I'm going to write it in here. I found saliva. We got some ant spit. Okay, so we... Um, what happened? No, we got attacked. Did we search in there? Yeah, we found something or other, didn't we? We uh, I actually forgot what we found. Uh, some food or something. It was garbage. So that's okay. So that's out of there now. This is this. I'm going to just take a quick break and just run through this real quick and just fix that so that we can see die rolls and share them. I think the idea of seeing them as we go is going to be way better. Just in this particular game, it's, it's, it's an actual problem because I have to have graphics up so much and I'm constantly looking at charts. So we'll be right back. Okay, that should be better for all the rolling and everything. So, all right, we're going to do a new round. We're going to scratch off some more time here on our time track. And now we have the option of going left or right. I think I'm going to come over this way. I think it's hilarious that I can come down here at some point and be blocked. Maybe we will kind of forget what happens there. So now let's see if this works so that we can see all the rolls. We are mapping to, yeah, look at that. That's so much better. 57... Although, except I might cover up. Oh, it is. It's like right on 57, <laughs> which is a green room. So we're going to go 57 is this green room right here. And um, yeah, here, if I move these out of the way. What is with all these green rooms? This is crazy. Okay, so I'm going to just draw this little thing in here real quick, more or less to the... Ooh, there's a door on the other end of it, though. Oh, wow. And it turns out that there is... Our, our other doors were blocked anyway by the uh, by the chasm, right? By the little chasm, because, because there's no, or um, like, this is still a green room, but there's just a wall on the other side of this door. So it doesn't matter anyway. So it's less funny than I thought. <laughs> I can't go into that room. And this is 57. Okay. Let's see what we've got in 57 here. We're gonna roll on, boy, G, geographic again, huh? Okay, giant fireball trap, what in the heck? We got a, oh, again, these dice are loaded. <laughs> Seriously? That's insane. Okay, well, we got a 100, let's scroll down. Holy cow, never in my life. Treasure trove. The adventurer stumbles into an area filled with treasure. Roll 1d100 and multiply that by 20. Let me get a calculator out. Oh, ca calculator. A calculator. Wait. Then roll. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. We just found the best thing in the game twice, right? Roll d1, 1d100 and multiply the result by 20 to discover how much gold is found. Then roll on TC once or table BC twice or table... T A thrice. So this is just for gold. We got 52 gold, right? So 52 gold times 20 gold gives us 1,040 gold. Does that say 20? Roll 1D100. I feel like that can't possibly be, right? I got a 52, right? Roll 1D100 and multiply the result by 20. Oh my God, we're in the money now. We, that's 1,040. Here's a calculator. <laughs> no way. Here, 1,040 plus what? We had a 108 plus 100, so plus 208. 1,248. We are loaded. Oh my gosh. 1,248. Yeah, we can never leave this dungeon now. We have too much money. We can actually buy the stuff now in the town. Holy smokes. Okay, this is, uh, this is, this is, this is wild, man. All right, so, so there's that. And then, so now I've actually never looked at these treasure tables before, right? So let's take a look at them here and just kind of make an educated guess. Um, first of all, I've forgotten what we get to do. Is it A three? Yeah, A three times, so C once. So A three times could be this, right? So there's, there's some brews, some potions... 
Elixirs. I want magical weapons, man. If we go, okay, so if we do table C once, superior stuff, superior stuff. Look at this. There's gemstones. <gasps> wow. Wow. Okay. Oh, there's a little thing up there at the top that says some of these things are re-rolled when you're rolling at the market. I didn't even notice that before. Interesting. That is not true on the weapons or the armor. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Because, like, what would you do? Would you roll and find a bag filled with silver pieces with 70 bucks and <laughs> or 140 coins, I guess? Okay, so, I mean, if we roll three times here, does that seem like the better bet for a starting adventurer, though? To get more stuff, right? Because um, we might really want to have some of these things. I'm not entirely sure. Didn't we get a potion of some sort somewhere? Was that my imagination? Oh, cure disease, right. Okay, so... Like, that's a good one to keep, I think. That'll be really handy in the dungeon here. Boy, howdy. I can't, Look at that legendary ring, necklace... Wow. Legendary. Oh, man. All right, let's just, you know what? Let's just go big. Let's just roll one time on Treasure C. This will never happen again. Watch me roll something god awful. But let, you know what? Let's just do it and let's just see what happens. Let's see how good this is on Treasure Table C. We roll. Oh, man. Of course you're going to do this. This is this is the dice equivalent of a, of, a, of, a, of a drum roll. 75. The gems. Oh, how funny. The thing I called out before. Gemstones, 75, uh, 560 gold pieces of gemstones. I'm just going to write it on the back here. Wow. One bag of gemstones. Wow. That's, that's, <laughs> that's unfortunate. 560 gold. I want cool loot, man. <laughs> that's what I get for getting greedy, I guess. Yeah. So that was, that was amazing. <laughs> Okay, wow, look at that. I can't believe it. Like, we found, what is this, one, two, three, four. You know what? It was behind two secret rooms. This was not easy to find. No regular, everyday, average Joe adventurer could have found this but us, okay? I think that, uh, I think that we are something special here. <laughs> wow, okay. We didn't even search in this room yet. Uh, that is, that was just like what this room was. So, you know what? This room has been pretty good to us. I say we go ahead and search in this room, which is rolling on F, find. And this may or may not cost us some time, depending on what we roll here. We have a 65. 65 here does cost us one time. So that's one more oil. Okay, so a 65. Searching through some junk, a torn page from a spell book is found. It is a little crumbled, but the spell is still intact. Roll on table S spells and add the result to the spell book. Hot diggity. Look at that. We got a spell we can't cast. You are allowed to still write into your spell book, though. Uh, spells. I mean, a free spell. This is a thousand gold pieces at the, at the, at the market, right? 72. Spell 72 is control. Okay, and that's our first one. Control spell 72. Um, do not roll for the monster's reaction for the remainder of combat. It will always attack. And it says negative 4 HP for cost. Holy cow. That seems very deadly. I don't understand how the spells work. I might not ever understand how the spells work in this. Okay, so we searched here now. Wow. And, man, if I was an artist, I would totally be, like, drawing, like, little... Like, we could draw piles of gold... Uh, right <laughs> little gemstones oh that's right that's what we found in here right little gemstones we'll just make a whole bunch of little colored dots to remember to remind us how good this room here's an emerald sapphires rubies look at that citrines whatever else we got we got i don't know mosquitoes encased in amber this has been a good room to us. Now, we could go back to this room, but it would cost us an hour to exit out this way. But I think we may as well just keep going this way. Was there a, um, what was that? 30, did I, 57 and 40. Let me just double check here. 44 had, yeah, and 57. Oh, right. I forgot to draw the door on 57. Okay, so there is a little door right here. I think I talked about it and I was waiting for ink to dry but I, I forgot about it. So 57 did have a door right here. This was right, 44, no door, no door. Okay, so now, now comes something that we haven't done yet. So again, we're at the top of the round, we burn an hour, right? 
There's our hour. And if we look at the turn tracker, so we, we burned our time, and this is something new to us here. We haven't run into this yet. If this is the very first turn of the quest, place it uh, blah, 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 blah. Otherwise, the player must choose an exit that the adventurer will move through, and, and the uh, player rotates the dungeon sheet so that the chosen exit is farthest away from them. If the exit does not have a door symbol, the player proceeds to step three. Okay, so it does have a door. So now, how does the door work? I have a chart for it. We haven't even seen this yet. So we have to roll what kind of horrendous door is on this thing. And we have a 65. So an LV3 jammed door. Oh, crud. Okay. So LV3. All right. So LV3 jammed door is a lever. The door is activated by a lever somewhere in the dungeon. See levers below. Now, we don't have, we haven't found any levers yet, right? So if we go to levers over here, lever doors operate in a similar way to lock doors somewhere in the dungeon. And the adventurer may have found a lever to pull, and by doing so, it has unlocked a door elsewhere. When the lever door is found, the player rolls 1d10. If they roll equal to or less than the number of lever pips, we only have a key, yeah? Yeah, we have one key, zero lever, so I can't roll a zero on a 1d10, right? Um, if you roll higher than that, which we would, the correct lever to open the door has not been activated, and the door is ticked on the map to show it cannot be checked again, right? So I think we roll, it's failed, so we checked that door, it cannot be checked again, that lever... That door cannot be opened by any lever that we find, I guess, okay? It must, uh, it must then be opened by passing a jammed door test. See above, note that when a new pip is shaded to the lever track, all ticks from lever door codes are removed from the map. So we have no way, we, there's a lever, I'm touching walls, I'm pulling sconces and stuff. Okay, jammed, some, let's see here, jammed door. Do I have jammed door written on here? Oh, it's over here, LV3, jammed door. So strength test minus 10. Um, and we can use our strong ability on it, right? And so this is basically we're going to sit here and try to brute force this door until we get it. Now, if we look at our character sheet here, we have a 55 strength plus 5 from strong because we have that, right? So we're rolling 60. However, LB3 says minus 10. So we have a 50-50 shot at this. And we're going to lose a hit point and a time each time we fail. A hit point and a time each time we can't roll less than 50. 18. Good deal. So if we succeed on an LV3, it says it is now open. Okay, so now this is open. I don't know how to mark it open, so maybe we'll just color it in green. Yeah, open. There we go. Door is open. So that's the way we went. That's the way we're going. Now we have to roll on the map and see what we find. All right, we have a 41. What does 41 look like? This is so fun. Like, I feel like I'm in this freaking dungeon, man. All right. <laughs> okay, so we're going to roll this like this. And what did I say it was? 41. All right. So, oh, you can't, oh, you just barely can't see this. Okay, that's all right. You don't, there's nothing to see here. All right, it's just a, we can exit to the north with, with a, with a door. And we can come south. No, we can't. That's it. That is our only exit is north, and there's a door there. Oh, buddy. That's a bummer. Okay, and this was room what? 41 yellow. Okay. Uh-oh. I'm dragging my colors around here. I don't want to ruin these pens. God knows. Okay. So then we have another door. Okay, but we don't know what it is yet, and that's okay. And we have 40, room number 41. Now remember, yellow rooms are empty. There's nothing there, right? So yellow says empty. There's nothing there. We can straight up go into searching if we want. Now remember, we're here to kill enemies. We're not here to dink around searching in rooms. We need to get this. We have zero of these done, and look how far. We're already five rooms into our dungeon, okay? So we, we, should, we should press forward, but you know what? Searching is a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and search. Anyway, okay, we're gonna do that. We're gonna search in here. This is a find, and this is a plus zero for the find roll. 
And what do we have? A 45, 45, 45, 40. Ooh, what is this? This area is dank and foul smelling like a teenage boy's bedroom, which is no surprise when a tomb is found hidden behind some fallen rocks. The tomb can be opened, optionally, by rolling 1d10 on the table below and adding one hour to the time track. Oh, and it said we'd take an hour anyway. So let's go ahead and shade that in. That's a wandering monster, so let's not forget that. Let me, let me just hold on to it. Um, okay, so add tomb F41. Tomb F41. Okay, that's funny. That was that was room 41, yeah? Uh, <laughs> to the dungeon sheet and mark it with a check if you decide to open it. So what can we find? We can find a ton of gold. Ooh, or a skeleton clutching a... Cre oh, it's like we can't lose, right? We just lose a time. So let's go ahead and fill out the time. So we're going to be a whole day ahead here. And let's just roll and see what happens, right? So here's the 1d10. We There's a 50% shot of finding a treasure in here, though. Okay. A fresh corpse holding a bag of gold. Nathan Drake. All right, we got a five. Oh, hey, that's the treasure table. Okay, so TA. Oh, let's pop over to treasure table A, and that's a minus 15, though. So a minus 15 on treasure table A. Whew, dang, that was a good roll otherwise, right? So uh, 71, right? 71 is a potion of finer healing. <gasps> yes, you know what? And I think we're going to strap that one onto our belt. Potion of Finer Heal, uh, and that is 8 HP, 8 HP. Okay, so that'll be in our slot 7 to 8. Hey, that was worth it, man. That was super worth it. I, I, I can dig that. Okay, so the tomb has been checked. We found a potion in there. That's pretty good. We searched it. Now we have two problems. Okay, so problem number one, possibility of a wandering monster, and we are up to the six. If we're looking at our character sheet, we're, we're down at the bottom there. We just, that that was like a whole day that just went by. So we have to do the six now. So we need to roll seven, eight, nine, ten to not fight. And we got a two, so we're fighting. <laughs> okay, uh, so before I forget, just because I don't want to forget it, uh, the next thing on there, I just had to, sh to fill that in as well, and that's the food thing. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do that now. I'm gonna mark one food was spent, and then um, it, basically we're just gonna erase our whole thing. And then just uh, just after that, we're gonna go ahead and have to to burn one more oil anyway after this combat. That's just where we are in the fight. Okay, so we have to do we have we have an encounter. Our encounter mod is negative thirty. Boom. Oh my god. 98. So this is probably good, right? So we got a 68? A, oh, crud. It's not good. <laughs> because a 68 is, is a vampire bat, right? What I wanted was like an orc or something, like 62, 65. And so this is like, I'm not going to do it, but like, you know, we could use a fate point to reroll just this die if we wanted to and to try to get, you know, uh, an orc. We could get a, a zero, I guess. A zero through five. Holy smokes, what's a spider queen? I don't want nothing to do with that. Okay, so anyway, 68 on our combat. So that's a what? A giant vampire bat. This sounds bad, you guys. <laughs> uh, giant. It's undead. Vamp. I'm going to write that in red. Okay, so it's um, vamp. Bat. Oh, uh, giant vampire bat. 45 attack value. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh Let's see here, 68, yeah, uh, 45, 3 plus 1 and 10, 3 plus 1 and 10, and see, the, the problem is it's table P4, I want, I don't care about parts, I want items, this is how I died last time, I could never fight anybody, so we're doing fly, surprise, uh, what in the heck, phase and resurrection, phase, I don't know what any of that is, Res. Uh-oh. Okay, hold on. This could be trouble. <laughs> we got a giant purple vampire bat here with 10 hit points somehow. Uh-oh. There we go. There's 10 hit points. Okay. So, uh, fly surprise phase and res. I don't know what these things are. So let's see here. Let's, let's, let's learn together here. What horrors have we just uncovered? So, so first of all, supplies, su supplies, 
Supplies, mother... All right, it means that it gets to attack us for free. Phase, I've never seen this. The monster can phase in and out of reality, making it hard to strike. The adventure suffers negative 10 to their strength or dex while attacking a monster with phase, and it's flying. So we're at minus 20 to hit this guy. And then what's res? Resurrect. Where's resurrect here? If the monster is killed, it may resurrect and come back to life. After killing a monster with resurrection and before it has been looted, roll 1d10. If a 1 is rolled, it immediately returns to life with full HP, and you must again attempt to kill it. <sighs> okay, so first let's roll for surprise, which was, I already forgot. Surprise is int minus 10. Oh yeah, I need a 10 to do this. Uh, 17. I still failed. So it gets a free attack, and its attack is 45. And so there's a there's a 9, for the love of Pete. It got me. And so it does plus 1 damage. And so it's going to do... Uh, let's go back here now. Monster Handy Sheet. So it hit me. Hit location is 7 off weapon. So it's just a straight up 5 points of damage. Ouch, this is why you want a shield, because you could t say, okay, my shield, you know, hits and takes that. So we're just going to take five points of damage right out of the gate. Oh my goodness, we're down to 15 hit points. I can't believe it. We're going to get chased out of here by a vampire bat and lose 624 gold pieces. Okay, that sucked. Now, let's see what it's going to do on its first round here. Its first real, real round. Monster will attack. So I'm going to attack too. Big surprise, yeah? And I'm at negative 20 because it is flying. It just occurred to me that maybe I should fix this so that this is with that those things on the left. That way I don't have to keep bouncing back and forth on these graphics. That's a good idea. That is a very good idea. Okay, so um, yeah, fly is just a negative 10. Phase is a negative 10. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Okay, well here we go. So I'm at I'm at negative twenty. <laughs> so I have fifty five. Oh my god, thirty five. I'll never hit this thing. So I could run away. How does that work? Escape combat. Oh, excuse me. Dex minus ten. Fail it. So dex minus 10 puts me at what? Uh, 45 minus 10 is 35 plus escape is 40. I have a better chance of running than I do hitting it. Uh, let's just fight this guy. Okay, here we go. We're going in. We're just we're just going to do it. What did I say? I need a 35 to hit. We've got a 79. Ugh. And it needs a 45 to hit. 89. So we both missed. Okay, so next round, we got to see what it's going to do. Escape, dude. Just run away. You don't want none of this. Eight. It's going to stay. Okay. Yeah, I'm at minus 20 to hit, and I have 55 minus 20 is 35. I feel like if I keep doing the calculation, it'll get better. 35. Come on. Let's see it. Oh, come on. Come on. 13. I hit it. I could cry. Okay, so I need to hit it real hard, <laughs> okay? Uh, can, oh, you can't see this. I'm gonna put its life. Can you see that? There's, so it, it's 10, it has 10 hit points, but it's one creature, so they're stacked. I don't have any spare D10s laying around here. Okay, so I hit it, and we're gonna hit it for, I rolled a, oh my God. Okay, well, at least I hit it in the head. Uh, so my, my sword is four, so we did five, uh, Six, seven, eight, right? Eight minus its three def defense, so I'm going to hit it for five. Okay, so we're going to bring it down to five hit points. Wham! Okay, so I feel better about that. Now, it gets to attack me, and what was its attack? 45? Oh, my God. And then it rolled a 34, so it's going to hit me. Uh-oh, this thing hits hard, man. It's going to hit me for, oh, my God, are you serious? Right in the head. So it's going to hit me for eight plus one, nine? It's gonna hit me for nine damage and there's nothing I can do about it. So nine damage, huh? Okay, so I'm down to six hit points. Are we gonna die here on quest number two? I mean, maybe we are. I mean, that's a possibility. Uh, so here, what's it, what's it gonna do next round? I can't believe this. 
It's going to nine. Monster damage last round. It will attempt to escape. What a jerk. Okay, so I okay, so I can I can attempt to block its escape. Right? Block escape. Minus ten. Monster remains, and I go to combat step four. Monster remains combat step four. Roll the damage die. I go straight to damage and apply the damage modifier. Okay. Roll the damage. So I've actually never. I'm. Let's see here. When the adventurer escapes, they don't get hit until an attack roll. Let's see. When the the monster escapes, the adventurer can let it go, attack, take a combat action. Or block its escape by passing the block escape test below. Block escape test strength minus 10, which is better than my option to hit it, right? Uh, monster. So then if I succeed, the monster remains and it says go to combat step four. Roll both the damage die and the location die together and apply the damage modifier to the damage die for the location rolled and the adventurer's damage modifier. So I hit it. And then it says, if the monster attempted to escape and has remained, start a new combat round from... Oh, so I get like a free hit. So we are absolutely going to block. So the best thing that it could have possibly done was this, was try to escape, right? Okay. Uh, I dig it. Okay, so now block escape is strength minus 10. So I'm at 55. Minus 10 is 45. But I have the escape skill at plus 5. So we're at 50% chance to just get like a free hit on this guy. And then otherwise it just escapes? Like, it just goes away? Yeah, I guess it just gets to go. Okay. So I got a 50-50 shot at hitting this thing. 62, it escaped. Unbelievable. So the real bad part about all of this is that um, it's, it's here in room 41 and I don't get like any kind of like it and it's full health next time we come into this room right so let's let's do vamp bat let's write it in red here right vamp vamp bat what a jerk <laughs> so oh this this is like not working <laughs> all right well there it is maybe we'll leave the vamp bat Right here under its little purple dye. Okay, so that was that was that. So the vamp bat has ten hit points. So we'll put two 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 d six down here. And there we go. It's a vampire bat, right? We know that this is bad news, and this this is supposed to be removed from the sheet. I don't have a way to do that, so I'm just gonna leave it on there so we have all of its stats. Okay, um, I'm just gonna not take the plus five skill if I get down below it. I'll just shift everything down one. That's an easy easy fix. Okay. So we almost died. All right. So, um, like, like now is now a great time. The player can at any time during a turn, except when in combat. We're not in combat. I hit this thing so hard it got scared and flew back away. Equip or unequip items to and from their equipment and uh, equipment slots and backpack. Once a result has been scored on a table that requires a belt check or targets a specific item, the player is not prepared to remove it or replace it. So see, this is this is a weird one because it doesn't say anywhere in here that like I could just start like downing elixirs, right? Like like uh, I can equip or unequip items to and from their equipment slots and backpack. It doesn't say I can just like start drinking stuff, but I don't see why not. I don't see how taking something out of my backpack and strapping it onto my bill is somehow less than you know what i'm saying like i don't see why i mean unless i have messed up somehow and cut that part out of the graphics which is entirely possible um let's see here here's like the actual page fail a quest if you're killed the scroll of resurrection use a life point see, mm, I don't see anything in here about just like chugging elixirs. I, I looked for this before. I don't remember it here, right? Choose your quest. But I, I also don't see why using your stuff out of combat would be forbidden, especially if you can dink around while you're equipping whole pieces of armor. It takes a lot less time than you just quaff a potion, right? It seems to me that that's just something that you can do. So let's, um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that that's, 
that's I, I just I don't see anything in here that says it either way. I don't see it explicitly forbidden, but I don't see it it you know said that you absolutely can either. Uh, I mean, using a belt item instead of making an attack. But what if we're outside of combat? What if we're outside of combat? I just I don't see anything here that says other uh, anything otherwise. So we got yeah I'm just I'm just doing it right we don't I don't I don't see anything that, that that says no I don't see anything that says yes but it makes sense to me so we have this one that can heal us for eight and a, and three that'll heal us for four so let's drink one of the four and one of the eight right that'll give us eighteen hit points okay that 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 keeps us alive um, I'm just gonna take off the back two potions just like that. Not sitting so pretty now, are we? Right? We had some pretty easy combats to begin with, and then we just got spanked by a giant vampire bat. And guess what? It's about to get a whole heck of a lot worse. Because that was the end of the round, right? That was uh, that was us getting at attacked by a vampire bat. Um, How did we even find this guy? We, like, searched for it or something, right? What did we do? Oh, the tomb. Right? Didn't we... No, we found something in the tomb. We searched. I don't know, but it's terrible. Uh, man, so now we have to escape, so for, or, or adventure forth. So we're going to shade off one to use one more oil, right, one more hour. We have to go through this door here. We don't know what's up with this door yet, so let's see what this door is. Gosh, 71. I don't want to roll high on these. Oh, am I sitting right in front of it? I am. It's open. The handle is turned and the door opens. I like that. Okay. Can't beat that. <laughs> All right, let's see what uh, what map we have now, what room we have. We have a 29. Let's see here. So a 29. You're going to have to look at that. I'm going to have to look at this. 29 is a yellow room with nothing in it. Although last time we had nothing in it, we got, we got jumped, right? We got wrecked. Okay, the good news is there's two exits out of this room that... We can just walk out, so we don't have to do any more any more rolling. Twenty nine. I almost feel like I should use like orange for this, so it shows up a little better. It's actually very difficult for me to see, and easier for you to see the yellow for some reason. But that's twenty nine. Yeah, maybe orange would be a little better. Okay, I don't think I have orange though. All right, so we're in twenty nine yellow. Boom, this one here, <laughs> and we can search it. I mean, we may as well, right? There's nothing else going on. How bad could it possibly be? Why are we gonna die? Whew. All right. <laughs> let's see. Let's 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 see. Let's have another one uh, fifty. Okay, I was gonna say a big one hundred. So this is just a straight fifty on the find. This one says, okay, so it's one time, so it's going to cost us one more time. Hidden and wedged in a part of the dungeon wall is a magic scroll, 200 gold. We'll roll once on table S spells and add scroll of, ooh, that's cool, before the spell's name when adding it to the adventure sheet. So let's go find the scrolls page, or spells rather, and we're going to roll here. What do we got? We've got a 61. So 61 is a scroll of clone, and it's worth 200 gold, right? Scroll of clone, 200 gold pieces. Okay, so a scroll of clone. At the start of the next combat round, a clone of the adventurer appears to fight the monster. The clone is an exact replica and gains all the benefits of the adventurer but track its damage separately. Any damage received is now dealt to the clone. Damage cannot be deflected, and when the clone's HP is reduced to zero, it disappears until the clone has disappeared. The adventurer is not permitted to attack as they are busy controlling the clone. Huh. So, uh, that's cool. I don't know if I should equip that on my belt so we can use it later, or what? I don't know how that works. So, we're just gonna keep it in our belt and maybe not, maybe not deal with that. So we explored in here, and we found a big, big nothing. And um, I mean, under the scroll, but like we didn't get attacked. And we want to fight like orcs and stuff like that, right? We want to, we want to fight things that that can drop weapons because now we're six rooms in and we haven't found a thing yet. So let's go, let's go north. Let's go north. So we're gonna shade in a room. Uh oh, another wandering creature. The the bat is what jacked us up last time. So we're gonna roll. 
these wandering creatures. So then, now we're back down to four on the time track. It's the next day. It's the morning. It's early. We need a higher than four. We got an eight. So no wandering monster. That's good. We're going to go up here into this room. So let's go ahead. It's funny. I always forget if it's a wandering monster I fought. Uh, let's see here. We found a 57. What is 57? 57 is a green room. I liked those. Man, we found, we've found some things in these green rooms, yeah? All right. Da, da, da. There's a door on the end of this, though. Oh, and it's the only way out. I'm sick of these doors and not finding any keys, man. 57. Okay. So... Let's let's see. Here's what our dungeon looks like now. This is going to be such a mess to clean up because when you get this thing wet, the ink slides and smears all over the place. <laughs> all right, so here's our green room. 57. All right. Well, we got to roll on the G chart now, right? That is geographic. Let's see here. 57. Boom, we got a 70. That's a high roll, yeah. Ooh, this, there's all kinds of stuff on here. There's a tree in here. We could totally draw like a little pine tree or something. There we go. I don't have a brown wet erase marker, but there's our little tree. Okay, tree. Uh, <laughs> uh, where is that? Let's see, rooted 70. In the center of the dungeon floor is an enormous tree with long spreading branches and bright green leaves. Beautiful white flowers grow on most branches and, and they project a soft yellow that pulses as the adventurer moves. And tree G70. Tree G70. Okay to the dungeon sheet. The adventurer may pick a single flower, optional, by rolling one detail on the table below and then mark the tree with a check. Okay, so now, what could happen here? Um, burn, let's see, and its bud turns into a crystal. The adventurer had discovered a crystal tree grown by a powerful wizard, so some crazy ass thing there. Uh, when the flower is taken, a branch dies. Moments later, the entire tree is withered and died. Lose one fate point, are you serious? The adventurer recoils in pain, lose three hit points after the flower is picked and turns black. Add black flower fl five gold pieces. The flower gl glows brightly and emits a powerful light. For the remainder of the quest, you do not spend oil when instructed by the time track. Add glowing white flower. <gasps> after the quest, the flower stops growing. So basically a one, two, and three is garbage in this. I have to take this risk. This is just too good. Let's, and it doesn't take a time to do this, right? No, this is just, just us. All right. Here we go, right? We're gonna scratch out the tree. Oh man, this could be amazing. Here goes. <laughs> Lose a fate point, I can't believe it. Actually, I totally can. <laughs> oh God, wow. Okay, well, there's that. Um, I mean, or you use a fate point and re-roll? Right? Like, does that make more sense than just eating the fate point? I mean, of course it does. Right? I don't think that there's a reason or anything that says you can't. I mean, why not? We've already we've already lost the point. Let's just see what happens. Maybe we lose two points. <laughs> Six, okay. The flower glows brightly and emits a powerful light. For the remainder of the quest, you do not spend oil. Okay, I'm going to write that down. Give me just a moment. All right, sorry about that. I've added our thing to, uh, there it is, our, our glowing white flower to our sheet. And that was just the room. That wasn't exploring it yet. Now, I'm not so sure that blowing time exploring rooms is helping us any. Remember, we're up here to do this. I did find some alternate colors. <laughs> I don't know if these help. See, that one looks a little bit maybe too red, though, so I don't think that's going to help us any. So we can just go... I think this had a door, yeah? 57. Yes, there's a door up here. I'm really bad about remembering to draw my doors. There we go. All right, so if we, we can come back this way, but I don't want to. I want to keep going. I don't know if I want to search in these rooms though, right? We're just, we're blowing time. I don't want to get attacked every time we have a wandering creature come after us because we're blowing through time. I kind of think that if we press on for enemies, 
I mean, I guess the wandering monsters kind of guarantee like 50-50 shot in enemy, so let's see what happens. <laughs> Basically, we have to roll well on the encounter chart to be able to find something to kill in here. So let's um, let's explore here where we are. We'll do a find. I mean, these are completely optional, but I'm, I, I guess I am trying to burn time because it lets me roll for wandering monsters, and yet I have yet to find anything that uh, that we can uh, you know get uh, any product from, right? So this is plus zero time. Okay, great. Uh, let's see here. So 93. Moving a large moldy carpet from the part from part of the dungeon floor, the adventurer finds it was covering a recessed panel. Uh, prizing it away reveals a treasure laying in a roughly carved out hollow. Roll on table B, uh, uh, treasure B, minus 15. Okay. You know what? I can't say no to treasure. Can't say no to treasure. Treasure B, minus 15. Okay. So let's go here. Treasure B, minus 15. Let's see. We've got... Oh, geez. Uh, what did I say? Minus 15. So we're at 23. 23 is going to be an objective item. Oh, wow. Um, an objective item is found that may be required for a quest. Check the current quest details. If it's not needed for the quest, it is instead a great item worth 150 gold. So we found something worth 150 gold. One great item. <laughs> 150 gold pieces. I guess on the upside, finding like a bag of gemstones and not just converting all this into cash means that when we fail this quest, I can still sell this stuff in town and get some more money back. So now that I think about it, that's probably the way to, to, to do that. Yeah, a great item. Wow. Okay, wonderful. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. That's just really strange. That's just really strange. 23, great item. Wow, and there's, that's a big roll there too. Yeah. Huh. Okay. If it's not needed for the quest, it just says an objective item is found. It doesn't. It doesn't tell me. It doesn't tell me anything else. It just says objective item. Okay. Well, there it is. We searched in here, and this whole room is done now. So we're stuck behind a door. So next turn, we're gonna have to go here, scratch out some time, and then we're gonna just have to try to exit this door here, which means we don't know what the door is yet. So let's roll for the door. Ooh. That can't be good. A trap locked door. 88. Uh-oh. 88 is TL5. And that seems like real high, right? <laughs> TL5. Trap locked door. The door is trapped and locked tight. See trapped locked doors below. Trap locked doors have been trapped and locked for a reason, and keys to this type of door are not left carelessly laying around the dungeon for anyone to find. The adventurer is forced to pass a test in order to pick the lock to avoid setting off the trap. They must have a pick recorded to their supplies area of their adventure sheet, or they cannot try to pick its lock. And then it says, if I fail, we lose a pick, we lose a hit point, and we lose an hour. <laughs> oh god. Oh no, okay. All right, trapped and locked, let's do it. So this says TL5, okay, so it's a dex minus 20. Our dex is what, 45, so 25, and then locks and traps. We have both of those, so we're at 35 to open this door. <laughs> oh God. <clears throat> 35 to open this door. What does it say? I mean, I guess we spend a lock. It doesn't really, s does it say that anywhere? Yeah, minus one pick, it does say that, okay. So minus 20 dex, mm. 35, 40, 45. Yeah, we got a 45, come on, let's see it. 51, I mean, we're just gonna have to sit here and keep trying is the problem, right? So that cost us, so we failed on the TL5. That's minus one pick, we have 29 left. Uh, one HP and one hour. Now we have, oh no, we don't have to spend the thing. Uh, so we're minus one HP as well. So we're down to 17. Okay, might have to start doing tick marks for hit points. And then I guess we just keep trying, right? And we have to roll, what did I say, 45? Dex minus 20 is, right? Ooh. TL5, dex minus 20, but, it, but it's plus 10 for us. So it's only dex minus 10. 
which is oh 35 yeah ours is real hard right because we're at 45 25 35 oh god yeah we need a 35 or below yeah this is rough 59 so we failed again so that's minus one hp minus one hour minus one pick and we just we just have to do it right like there's no other way through this door or we turn around and go to this other room we'll give it one more one more go we lost a hit point too in there okay all right one more try 35 nope we are not picking this lock 86 one one and one hour now we have to roll for a bad guy so we're down to 14 hit points Ugh. We took three shots of that door. It's just too hard. We don't have a high enough dex. <clears throat> That's a bummer. Okay, yeah, it was 35. All right, now we have to roll for the Wandering Monster at five. So we need six or higher to not fight. We got a one, so we are fighting. And we are fighting a 95 minus 30 is 65 is an Orc Archer. Yay! Something we can actually fight and get a weapon from. We got one! <laughs> orc Archer. All right. Orc Archer. Ooh, I like it. 65. Okay. 45. 2. Plus 1, 9. 9 hit points. And then treasure is IA plus 10. IA plus 10. Or... W plus 10, okay, W plus 10. Okay, and then what does it have? It has surprise, surprise. Okay, that's fine with me, man. We are we are doing it, and we're stuck in this room. I can't believe it. Okay, so what, uh, surprise means it attacks at a 45 to begin with. It gets a free shot at me, right? So it's free shot, 25, of course. It, it's way better than I am. <laughs> God, uh. All right, so it has, ooh, gosh. So it just hit me for six, seven, eight, nine. Did we just die? Nine, and what was it plus one damage? Encounter orc archer plus one. I didn't write the plus, I just wrote a plus. I didn't write the one. So wait a second here. Oh my God, I think we just died. We might not even have, well, we have 14 hit points. So we have, we got hit for, <laughs> we got wrecked. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We just got hit for 10 points of damage. And there's literally nothing I can do about it except for, like, re-roll if I use a fate point. Like, is that the thing to do this early in the game? I don't know how hard those things are to gain or if you even can gain them. So we're down to four hit points. Wow. Uh, I need a helmet. Clearly. This getting hit in the head stuff is no good. So now I... Oh, did I forget to... Oh, that was its surprise attack. Now I get to... Oh, my God. Here I just come around the corner trying to pick a lock and all of a sudden... <laughs> In the back of my head. So now what is it going to do? It's going to do a six, which is the monster will attack. So I'm going to attack too. <laughs> and so I've got a what? I need to do nine points of damage somehow. So let's let's get some some counters out here. So I got to do nine points of damage. And I have, here goes my shot. Let's see here. We are taking a 55 or less. 74. So I missed. Here goes, it's 45 or less to hit me. It rolls an eight. So again, it's gonna hit me. And it has, oh, this might not be that bad. So it's a minus one, because it hit me in the feet. Um, so it hit me in the feet for four damage, because it's three plus one, right? Um, then minus one for the feet is three damage. And then because I have, oh, I don't have feet. So I just took three damage. So I have one hit point. Um, oh boy. I mean, there's, I could try to escape, but then I'm stuck in this room. We have to kill this guy. I can't drink enough potions to, like, out get damaged. I just have to hit him really hard. So let's see what they do. Let's see what the, the creature's going to do. Zero. They are going... Ooh, they're going to attempt to escape. Are you kidding me? Okay, so I'm going to attempt to block escape. That's a strength minus 10. So my strength is 55. So we're going to go 45 or less. That's, that's less easy than hitting it. Oh, it's a dex. No, no, block. Yeah, minus 10. Oh, but escape. I have escape. Don't I have escape? I do. A plus 5. 
So block escape is going to give me a strength minus five then. So I have a 50-50 I have a shot of blocking. That's right, just like before. 55. So it escapes. Remove the monster, escape. I can't believe it. <laughs> we finally got something that could give us the item we need, and we got, and it ran away. So escape combat, right? Remove monster, add it to the area. Oh my god, escape combat, block escape, monster remains, remove monster. Ugh. So it just says remove monster. It doesn't say, it doesn't say, oh, it doesn't say add it to the area. I thought it's, 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 uh, it's only when we escape. Oh, so maybe the bat is gone because the bat flew away. It didn't want, want to get hit hard. This guy didn't want, it just says remove monster. So they're gone. Oh, so these do have to come off. Oh, I see. Okay, my bad. All right, so E-S-C, E-S-C. Okay, so those guys all ran away. I can't believe it. We got jumped by an archer, popped in the back of the head, brought down to one hit point, and then it just took off into the shadows, and we needed to kill that thing because we need three weapons from enemies in this place, and we can't make it happen. This is absolutely insane. I can't believe this. What am I supposed to do? Man. <laughs> I thought they went to the board if they escaped. If they escape, they just straight take off and they get removed from this list here. I see, okay. So here's the deal. If we attempt to do the lock pick, we could die. So we have no choice now but to drink both of our remaining healing potions to take us from one to nine hit points. Okay, so there's that. So we have no more healing potions. That's what we started the game with. We gotta get out of here somehow. So maybe we spend an hour, we come back a room over to here, right? So we come back to here because I can't pick that thing. So we're going to blow an hour. We're going to come right back to here. Okay, and then we're going to blow another hour to go over here. This is burn uh, oil, but we have the, our little thing, um, our glowing leaf, which is pretty awesome. Wow, we're going to die in the second quest again. I can't believe it. All right, so now we're in here. Let's see what this room says. 98. That's a blue room. Wow. Okay. That might be the first one of those ever. So 98 blue room. Where are you? That was a heck of a roll. So it goes this way. Oh, it's a dead end. Of course it is. Maybe we find three enemies that are all like goblins that just give us their weapons. <laughs> okay. So 98 blue. Let's see here. That's good enough for the map. I can't believe this happened. It ran away. So, funny story, that's what actually happened to me last time when I was trying this character out. Like, like the very first and only other time I've played this, just by myself to kind of get a feel for it, I did this quest, Dungeon Training 2, uh, once and I had to retreat, like, pretty early on, I just got beat up. And then the second time I went in a, quite a bit further, like like eight, nine rooms or something, a little bit, like maybe two rooms more than this. And um, I had to bail on that too, and I could never find a weapon. I, could, right? I had a guy jump me and then run away. So 98, what does this say to do? I can't even remember, I never see these. Um, let's see here, check to see the quest if they're relevant, they're not. If they're not, the area is regarded as empty, but it still retains its color for the purpose of searches. Well, that's right, searching stuff has a, ooh, did I mess that up on this one? I probably did. Uh, <laughs> whoops, because the green room search should have been higher than whatever I rolled, right? Oh, well, it's too late now. That happened. I did mess that up. So the green or the blue, the blue room, let's just search since, since we're in here. And the blue search is plus 20. That's right. The green would have been plus five. We're at plus 20. So whatever this is, plus 20. So we have 23. So that's going to cost us an hour, whatever it is. 23, that's one hour gone. 23 says, while searching around, a piece of equipment gets caught in a crevice of the dungeon's wall. The adventurer carefully prizes it free. It's, it's like, you think it's like pr prize. Pri it's pri prize, P-R-I-E-S, P-R-I, that says prizes, right? It free, but has suffered, but it has suffered some damage. Roll 1d10 for location until an item is rolled and shade in one pip on the track. <gasps> no way. 
Like, you could totally, like, I could lose my sword. Um, two. No, I got nothing. We just gotta keep rolling. Oh, are you kidding me? We could be here for days. I don't have enough gear. Four. Leather arm guards. So that's gonna take a damage because I got stuck. Wow, that was awful. To heck with this blue room. That's terrible. Okay. <laughs> so, so here we are again. We have no choice but to go back to the door. So that's one hour, two hours that we have to just blow. So let's do let's do one hour, and we have to roll for a wandering monster. So we are here now. We have to remember where we are, uh, and we have to roll for a wandering monster. And this time it is a six. So we need seven or higher. Four. So we got jumped by a wandering monster on this spot right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna trade us out with a with a die. So just so I know where we are. Uh, because we're not where I want to be and where I plan to be, and now we're about to get attacked. Unbelievable. This dungeon is kicking our butt. So 13 minus 30, so we rolled a 1, right? Uh, okay, so this is going to be useless, right? This is going to be absolutely worthless for us. So this is giant rats. We haven't fought any yet, though. Giant rats. We're going to go 25, attack value 0, minus 2, and 3, 2, 2, right? 3, 2, and 2, and they have disease and pack. And then we also have a table P2, which I don't care about. I don't care about any of that. I just don't care. So they are, rats are 3, 2, 2, right? 3, 2, 2. So the king rat is up first. All right, so let's see what they're going to do here. So the rats are going to behave very poorly, I'm sure, with a 1. monster. If the monster has less than half its hit points, it gains 10 AV. It does not. So it's just a regular straight-up attack. So I'm going to attack first. What do I have? 55? Oh, this is so awful. We were doing so well. 77, so I miss. And they have plus 10. So they have 25 plus 10. They have a 35 or better they have to beat. They failed as well. So next round of combat, what are they going to do? Just go ahead and escape. I'll let you go. 7. Nope, they're going to attack. So I'm going to attack. I need a 55. I've got a 14. So I hit. And I'm going to hit these stinking rats for uh, seven, uh, seven damage, right? So that's going to be three, four, five, six, seven. That's enough to kill. Okay, so let's see what they do. Because I have a plus four from my, my uh, sword, my big two-hander. So they rolled a seven. So they missed. Okay, great. So I killed these stupid rats. I didn't take any damage. I don't... I have so many body parts of animals and little gross creatures. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we have. Parts. They were they were P2. They were P2. So we have P2. We have a 37. We just found a leg for 14. Great. One leg. 14G. All right. So there it is. That was it. That was our big fight with some rats. We got attacked by rats. So now, if we spend another hour, we can move back up here. This says we have to eat. So there's another food gone. And then we erase all of this, and now we're in this room, and we are going to attempt to exit that direction. And that direction requires us... I mean, we have no choice now. Now we're stuck, right? Oh, we could come all the way back here, though. Right? That was room 44. There was no door there. Maybe that's what we do. Maybe instead of coming up here, we come down here. Because 44 didn't have a door, yeah? Yeah, there's no door. Okay. So then if we spend... One, two more hours, so one, two. Yeah, let's leave this door alone because I can't seem to open it. Then we can come out this way, so, um, right, we were here, so we spent an hour, we spent an hour, and another hour. Now we get to roll for a combat again. <laughs> this time it's a four, so we need higher, we need a five or higher. Oop, I got a three. So we're back in combat with, with some random thing now. Oh boy, okay. And it's minus 30, right? So we got a 63, a 66. What is that? Spider Queen. Holy smokes. 66 on the Spider Queen. We are fighting the hardest stuff. This is so crazy. Spider Queen. And the Spider Queen has... I can't believe this. Spider Queen, 40... Three defense plus two damage. Are you crazy? 
and 14, and you only roll on table P1, and it has, hold on, we're not done yet, web surprise and poison. Oh my god. Okay, so we know that it gets to roll surprise first, right? What was surprise? Surprise is int minus 10, so I have to roll a, my int is 20, so I have to roll a 10 or less to not just get wrecked. I rolled a 79, so it's going to get a free shot on me, and it's free shot at plus two damage. I only have nine hit points. Is going to hit a uh, five is just like mid body, right? Monster, let's see here. Hit my, oh, it hit my hands. So wait a second, my hands are my hand wraps with two armor. Okay, so we're gonna have to do the math here now. So it hit for five plus two, so it hits for seven. The hands are a two, so it hits for five. Five. I can deflect two damage to the hand wraps and by filling in two little pips. So it's going to only hit me. So that was minus four from seven. So it hits me for three. So I go from nine to six hit points. Oh my god. How many hit points does this thing have? 14. And I can only roll on P1. I mean, I guess we just stand and fight. I, I We could attempt to run away, but we're a fighter. Oh, that wasn't even their that was that was their jump. That that was their surprise attack. What does the rest of their stuff do? Oh my god. They have web and poison. Poison. Would a monster score is a natural one? Okay, so then they're gonna they're gonna poison us if they roll a one. And then web sucks too. At the end of each combat round in which the monster is still alive, the adventurer makes an avoid web test to oh jeez. To determine if they will get an attack or make at the end of each, or or make a combat action, and forfeit next attack, combat action, and escape. Oh wow, we oh we could get really messed up here. We could get really messed up here. Okay, so let's see what they're gonna do now. They are going to five, which is just uh, come at me, bro. Right, five monster will attack. I mean, I can't do fourteen damage unless I'm the luckiest person on the planet. I think this is where we run away, but this video's been long enough. Let's go for it. We have a 55. We gotta we got do 55. Less than 55, 66. We missed, and they have a 40. And they got a 31, so it hits me, and it's gonna hit me for, oh my god. So, <laughs> seven is my off weapon. Okay, I don't wanna take any more damage to my weapon, but I might have to, I assume I can. It's It's got little spots for it um although uh, oh it's shield yeah i don't know um so if it hits me for four plus two is six i only have six hit points and it hits it says it says off hand right isn't that what that said it, well, it says off weapon but this says off hand so i assume that means my two-handed weapon you know i still can block meaning um oh no it, oh no I'm, yeah off weapon seven okay not a belt check uh, so it's four plus two. Yeah, so it's going to do six damage unless I deflect two to my mighty claymore. Oh my god, which is almost broken now. Uh, so I'm going to get hit for four still, right? Yeah, so I'm down to two hit points. Okay, but then <laughs> this thing's got me trapped. We are so done here. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> we have to make the web check now, right? So web check here at the end of each round. The avoid web is a dex plus 20. My dex is what? 50 minus 5. So my dex is 45. And I don't have dodge. So my, my web is 45 plus 20. So I have a 65. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get webbed. So that's that's good. And the neighbor's alarm is going off. I'll, let me stop while they figure out what's going on. Okay, they sorted out whatever was going on over there at the neighbor's car alarm. Sorry about that. All right, so now we got to figure out what this thing is going to do to us. It's going to kill us is what it's going to do. A four says that it will attack. So you know what? We're going to attack. We're just going to go in and say we need, what I say, 55? 55. We've got an 82. So we missed, 
and they need a 40. And, uh, ooh, they miss. So, again, we're going to start combat over. So, let's see what they do. They are going to... Oh, no, are they running away? <gasps> Monster will attempt to escape. I am just going to step back and let this happen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, Spider Queen escaped. Yeah, you know what? Sayonara, Spider Queen. Have fun. I'm, I mean, I'm almost dead. I have two hit points. So, we go into this room, which is what? This room is 86. What does 86 look like? 86 looks like a, uh oh, ruh -roh. It's a red room. Man, you'd think we'd have had more red rooms in here. 86. Okay, so this room, you can't, I mean, I'm not, there's a door on the bottom. Okay. All right, so there's a door here, 86 red gonna draw the door man these doors are so difficult okay and I'm gonna presume it's locked so here's our red door how funny we're like right back towards the beginning because I can't open a door back there but who knows what's happening with this door now oh boy all right 86 what do we find it's an encounter so we don't have a choice we're about to get attacked and probably eaten alive by six so it's some worthless thing again, right? It's giant rats once again. Oh no. <laughs> so giant rats, giant rats. See, they're just an annoyance. They don't help us. Zero, minus two, three, two, two, P2, two, disease, and pack. Okay, so what are they gonna do here? Giant rats, three, two, two. They, whoa, they are going to. One. What is one? What are these giant rats going to do? They are going to, if the monster has less uh, than half its HP, it gains some stuff. But it's not gaining anything against us here. We're just rolling to die here. So we're going to attack the giant rats. They have, uh, they have a 35 to hit. We have a 55. So here goes my 55. I have a 65. I missed. And they have 25 plus 10. So they're 35 or better. They are 51, so they missed. So now we see what they do in the next round. Next round is a six. Monsters will attack. We will attack these giant rats as well. And we have a 44, so we hit. We hit. Whoops. We hit. And we're going to hit with a uh, eight and one. Why don't I have poison? So eight is a waste. So I hit him in the waist. They don't have a belt to make a check on, and I only hit for five damage uh, because they they this is one plus four thanks to my barely hanging on their amazing sword I found <laughs> now we got to see if they hit us and they have again a 35 attack value and they rolled a 16 so yes they hit me and they hit me with oh no a uh, three which is a torso plus one so they're gonna hit for four right so three four and I might have just died to some giant rats, and I think that's okay. I have no way to block it, right? Um, so um, I actually also have to get going anyway in the next eight minutes. So <laughs> so I have nothing for my tour. So this is why this works out pretty well. We can all see how this played out, and, and man, that's brutal, right? So I have nothing for the torso to block it. So my only real options would be to burn fate points to, you know, re-roll the damage or something, right? Is to re-roll how I got hit. I didn't get a single experience point, which I'm just, just ashamed of, right? So they hit me for three. I have two hit points, so I die. So what happens is I go, life goes down. It comes down to two, and we have 20 hit points again. And I, I guess we're still in combat with the, 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 the rats. I don't actually know how that all works. The book doesn't like say too much about dying. It just says, if you do, you erase all your stuff and start over again. So, or it didn't say start, I mean, like, like, like you just erase your, your, your poison disease and you have 20 hit points. It doesn't say what happens otherwise, right? Like there's no, there's, there's nothing in there about, um, like, you know, you're out of combat all of a sudden. So you just just maybe spring up. I'm, I don't see anything here real quick. I know it's in the book. I've seen it. Um, it's probably towards the beginning somewhere. We didn't get a single experience point, which was crazy. We never rolled that well, like below 10. 
which is a real shame uh, because we could start filling in these pips and get experience points. But uh, we rolled really high. We got an amazing Claymore. We got ourselves um, uh, a lot of treasure, you know, like I'm not throwing in the towel on this guy yet, but I think if we die, that's, that, you know, like that's a good sign that we're in trouble here. This dungeon is just not for us. If we're still in combat with these rats, but with 20 hit points now, they're, those, those are dead. We have to roll the next round. So let's go ahead and... They're going to do a 1, which says, what now? 1 says, if the monster has less than half its HP, gain AV 10. Great, that's what it had before. Okay, so if I attack, I need a 55. I got a 14. So I landed a hit. I just have to do 2 damage. My sword does plus 4. Uh, so there we go, right? We're going to hit it 9. Where's a 9? 9 is going to hit them in the back. So plus 2. So we're going to do 4, 8, 10 points of damage, so we're going to kill this rat for sure. Now they have a, what did I say, plus 10, so they're going to roll 35 again. Um, 78, so they missed. We killed them. That is that for the rats. Yay! You know what? We are good at killing rats, though. I'll say that. So let's go ahead and pull up the parts, right? And this is rats are on P2. So we are going to roll a, oh my god, a 100. <laughs> okay, these dice are loaded, I'm telling you, what on earth? I'm serious, just, okay, everybody, I think I just, I just hooked up Wizards of the Coast here. Those came from the Dungeons and Dragons starter set, right? Go out and buy these loaded dice, that's insane. P2 100, I found rare. Roll again and record your find on your adventure sheet with rare before its name and add 400 gold pieces to its value. If you happen to roll uncommon, scarce, or rare on the second roll, roll again. So we just added 400 gold to... Two. <laughs> this time, we got ourselves a rare ear. It's Diablo. Let's see here. Rare ear. 402 gold pieces. And I think that's gonna do it, right? Like, like we're in here, do we search this room before we bail on the quest real quick? I think we do, right, since we're here. We're gonna be in here, we're gonna search. Um, that is a plus 10, I can't forget, I keep forgetting that. So plus 10 gives us a, what, 23 on a search, plus one hour, which is going to be right here. 23 says, uh, oh good, oh no. This is the roll a d10 until I get something and take a damage. I could lose my sword here. One. I don't have a one. We're going to add a damage. We want not a six. If we get a six, this character goes in the garbage because <laughs> we got a, a nine. Do we have a nine? We do. Leather tacit. Our legs take a damage. There we go. And then we bail on the quest, okay? Because we just got wrecked. We just got absolutely destroyed. Now, the good news of this is, is all we lose is this. We're going to lose 624 gold pieces, which is a fortune right we're gonna lose a fortune because that's the penalty for failing this quest however we're still alive we, we sprung back to life you know much of the surprise of the king rat and uh, with, with the with the ear right that, 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 that was a trophy rat to kill um, and so what we can do here I'll take the the hit right now 624. And then what we do is we go to town, 624, and then we can heal up, we can replenish our things, we can sell all of this and go to the market. But as for now, I do have to stop. I really, really am having a good time. I just, I just, it's so rough when you just aren't getting the rolls you need. And it just, it's funny to me that this has happened to me now three times on the training quest. It's, it's just a little brutal, but uh, there we are. That's, that's, that's how it is. We're going to go in fresh. We already got 20 hit points. We just blew all of our potions. So we're going to go ahead and take a look and do all the shopping and everything. And then I think we're just going to be back with another video, uh, maybe taking on dungeon training too again someday. We'll see how that goes. Um, and yeah, until then, thanks so much for watching. I hope this really actually looked better than it felt here at the end of this. Especially think of all the great roll. We had three 100 rolls. That's incredible. That's the only reason why we're rich. We had some great rolls. We had some cool adventures. We found all kinds of cool stuff here. Oh yeah, we did explore that one. I don't know a good way to do this here, but I think this will work. So, um, but that was that was our little adventure into Dungeon Two. And, and, and again, imagine if we had. Hold on, let's pop on over to the quests here, right? Any of these other quests? Look at this. It's a. Uh, 
Objective area found, right? The Spider Queen. Objective area is found. It is the Spider Queen lair, and the adventure must kill Monster 66 on table E, right? Like, there's things that we could be doing here that are really fun. We're just trying to get used to combat and, like, the flow of the game and all of that and, like, these little issues of, like, oh, when do I come back to life? You know, little things like that. How do I open a door? How many times can I try to open a door? I think you can just sit there and keep trying. Um, you know, so there's 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 things to do here, but we have to get through these first five. Now, if we skip Dungeon Training 2, oh my goodness, this one says loot three armor from the monsters here. So that's going to be just as bad. Uh, four is enter the dungeon and loot one part, one weapon, and one armor from the monsters here. And then Dungeon Training 5 is enter the dungeon and collect two treasures from table TA. I mean, you could be in there for a long time. That's intense, which is awesome, though, because there's 50 quests in this little book. Right? This little book is not long. It's like all of 20 pages of rules, right? And then how, when does, you know, at some point you start seeing, um, uh, you know, t uh, tables, right? There's a sweet dragon on page 75. These are all printable things here at the back you want to print. So monster, yeah, this is the handy sheet, the monster abilities. Oh, helps if you can see it, right? So, you know, 67 pages, you know, and, and, and more than half of these are tables to walk you through to just have an amazing adventure and, and tons of fun. So I hope you enjoyed watching it. I definitely want to get this back to the table soon, but like I'm itching just for adventures. And you know what? Explore it is really feeling good. This is feeling really good. And yet I really enjoyed myself playing Albion's Legacy, a game that I just kind of forgot I even existed that I'd never played. And, you know, it was a little long, a little rough, and I made a really bad and stupid mistake in it at one point, but I mean, whatever, it still played out the same and it was a lot of fun. So we'll see what happens here. I didn't kill enough guys because so many people escaped to get down to the plus five skill, right? I only had one or two more deaths. So I was still two kills away to get down to the plus five skill. So we didn't get that. You're supposed to erase those when they escape, but I don't have a way to erase that wet erase stuff. So I couldn't do it. But thanks for watching. This was D100 Dungeon by Martin Knight. You can get all the stuff on his website. Uh, if you scroll down to the bottom of the Board Game Geek page, You'll see a link right there to mk-games.co.uk mk to go ahead and take you to all the information that you need to figure out what's going on with this. And remember, games are made for everyone's recreation. I'll see you next time.